Welcome to sunny Southwest Florida and East Naples Community Park where the Minto US Open Pickleball Championships just continue to get bigger and better powered by Margaritaville and powered by a whole lot of people who want to be a part of this tournament either as a player or as a spectator. A whole lot of fun on day four as we continue our coverage all week long from this beautiful location here in Southwest Florida. Hello, everybody. Dave Benz alongside the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships Tournament Director, Melissa McCurley, and the Aussie Chad Edwards. We are excited to be back here. And uh, Guys, this is day four. Uh, what have you seen so far this week that uh, has surprised you? Uh, well, nothing that surprised me. We had rain again, so that's something that's a <laughs> staple here at the U.S. Open. We started the first two days with that. Uh, but here we have the largest day that we've ever had in a single day at the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. 980 players are playing today. And we've got the men's pro mixed or the men's pro doubles senior doubles coming up today. Uh, that was easy for me to say, but you know what hasn't been easy has been for Terry Graham and Chris Yvonne to be able to keep track of all the people that want to be in this tournament because the numbers just keep getting bigger and better, Chad. Yeah, I mean, this is year number seven uh, for me being here. The U.S. Open was one of the reasons why we moved to Naples. And I mean, we've seen the growth and just continuing to grow bigger and bigger and bigger each year. I mean, who, who would have thought seven years ago that we'd be at 3,000 participants for a tournament. Right, yeah. and, and 5,000 people registered to try to get in. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, Ray Kulikova, who's the executive producer for the coverage here this week, he was on a podcast with me a couple weeks ago. We had Chris and Terry on. We talked about the growth of this tournament and just how it has grown exponentially from 2016. It's very humble beginnings, and it's only going to be bigger and better as the week continues. Our coverage yesterday certainly was very interesting as they had the split age uh, bracket and uh, how about the, the, the play that we saw yesterday oh yeah it was fantastic we had a bronze medal match uh, yesterday with Beth Bellamy and uh, Hunter Johnson and Hunter Johnson's first time to be here on this championship court at the US Open Beth it's her second year and it was just fantastic 11-2 11-3 and then Chad you see them getting the bronze but the gold uh, went to Simone Jarjim and Jahim Onsins and if I butcher that name I'm sorry <laughs> but uh, that's that's the all name bracket and they get the goal. It's it's two Brazilians right there. So Simone actually grew up watching Jaime play tennis for Davis Cup and ATP. So she looked up to him while she was playing tennis. So it was a big privilege for her to play with Jaime yesterday, come out with gold, and they had a lot of fun while they were out on the court. And by the way, to get the gold, they beat Kyle Yates and Eva Welsher. And uh, Simone and Kyle, they will be reunited out here uh, at this tournament a little bit later in the week. I know that's something a lot of people are looking forward to. Oh, yeah. Excitement here in Florida. Florida. I've never seen more electricity on the center court when uh, Kyle Yates and Simone have been uh, playing uh, here in Naples, Florida. Chad, you make any predictions for the week? Well, obviously, I want to see Simone win a couple more golds. I mean, I'd, I'd probably be in trouble when I go home if I, if I didn't say that. So. <laughs> That's the right answer, <laughs> no doubt. All right, we're going to take a quick time out, but don't go anywhere. Our coverage from beautiful Naples, Florida continues after this quick time out. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Back here in sun splashed sunshine state of Naples, uh, Florida. Well, I guess Naples isn't really, it's, it's more of a city than a state, but it's a state of mind when you're at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, and we are super excited to begin our coverage day, and we're picking it up here in game three uh, of this match between Mircha Morario and uh, his teammate is Paul Olin, and they are in the near court, and in the far court, they're taking on Rick Wistkin and Stefan Andren. And uh, so far, guys, it, it's been a fun day here uh, and this men's senior pro doubles uh, circuit. Yeah, it's certainly a favorite day here at the U.S. Open. Uh, this is a quarter final match. You know, they're tied 1-1. This is game three. So they started 8 o'clock this morning, reached the quarterfinals early, and we got some great matches to see this afternoon. And, and you see Witzkin getting fired up there. That's, that's typical Rick Witzkin there. 
Very animated, loves to get the crowd behind him. And we see, we see him there getting fired up. And they're three points away from winning this match. And a timeout is being taken here. And uh, it's going to be a fun day. We're just getting started. Let's pause for a quick moment. we got a lot of sponsors. We're going to work them in uh, here at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. And we're back to live action, and Melissa McCurley uh, already saying that she's uh, she's on board with the Skechers, uh, the Skechers Viper Court Pros. I am. I bought a pair a couple of days ago out here in the vendor village. Uh, Skechers a sponsor, and I wore them for the entire day, thinking I might need to break them in, but they were instantly comfortable for me. So look forward to getting them on the court. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of the uh, of the arch fit support in those ones. I'm a big fan of anything with Arch support. <laughs> oh, Rick continuing to dominate. How about that right down Broadway to make it 9-4. Yeah, and when you get Rick Wittskin on a roll and get him pumped up in front of a crowd like this, uh, you can really feel the pressure, even all the way from over here in the booth. And the winner of this one will uh, move on to the semis where they will take on the number one seed as Dave Weinbach again is continuing to make a run here in Naples, Florida. And he is uh, paired up with his teammate John Sperling. So they're awaiting the winner of this match. So here we go, game and match point at 10-4-1. Yeah, perfect ball from Olin there, taking it nice and early, going back behind Andrin. Didn't try to do too much with it, but we saw Andrin trying to get up to that kitchen line and close just a little too quickly. So match point number two now. And that one's out, and that is all she wrote. A berth in the semifinals for Andrin and Witzkin as they win game three, 11-4. Go back to this final point, and sometimes the best balls are the ones you don't hit. Yeah, Olin just tried to get a little too big with that one. He really wanted to finish the point. You saw the big backswing, that's why it caught the net. But. After taking game one, Olin and Marario just didn't have an answer for Witzkin and Andrin coming out too strong in this one. Well, that is uh, our first match of the day, although uh, an abbreviated match as it was bonus coverage. Our first full match of the day coming up here in a few moments. We will have Peter Pradanov and Scott Moore taking out Scott Crandall and Jose DeRisi. Stay with us from Naples. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Back here in beautiful Naples, Florida, and you know, the thing that is striking me, Chad and Melissa, is um, it's been a few years since I've been here to this event. COVID wiped out 2020. I was here in 2019. 2020 was wiped out by COVID. 2021, my NBA season was shifted because of COVID, so I couldn't come. Last year, uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves actually made the playoffs, so I couldn't come. So it's been a while. I'm not used to seeing crowds like this on Wednesday. This is this is more like a, a Saturday kind of a crowd, and that's just a testament to how much bigger and better this tournament has become. Oh, yeah, and it's exciting for people to come here. I tell people all the time there's it's just magical to come to the U.S. Open. It's a bucket list uh, for many, whether you're playing here or you're just coming here to be a spectator and be a part of all the festivities that go on all week long. Yeah, I've, I've got a lot of clients down here that 
you know, went into the lottery, were, were lucky enough to get tickets for every day, and, and they were just so excited to be able to come here, experience everything. But it's just, I mean, the thing with the with the Open is just how much of an atmosphere that it, it plays on, and it, everybody that plays loves it, everybody that comes and watches it loves it, and it's just one, I mean, we always talk about it, it's one big party in the, in, in, in the park. Yeah, it's a, a, a big party in the park, and this year, you know, we had 5,000 people register for this particular event, we got 3,000 people competing, and we got... Uh, 980 people just playing today so well and four of those people are going to be on the court here in a few moments we'll have Predanov and more against Crandall and Derisi and our coverage of that can, comes up in just a few moments stay with us from beautiful Naples Florida Margaritaville it's not just a state of mind now it's a place to live Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. And back here in Naples, just about set to get this quarterfinal match underway. Final spot in the semifinals in this bracket on the line and uh, the winner of this one uh, yet to be determined but Scott Moore is somebody who certainly made an impact on this sport over the years you see his resume it's pretty impressive it is impressive he's a triple crown winner here at the US Open as well uh, he's been in the game uh, some 10 10 years now and has always found his way here to a, a championship court that's uh, makes him a legend really in this game uh, probably a future Hall of Famer as well Chad oh yeah with it with that a doubt and you know Scott was one of the the first people that uh, that I had the privilege of, of meeting when when we came down here in 2016 for the first US Open and uh, he will of course uh, be teamed up in this one with uh, his uh, his teammate is Peter Pradenov and uh, you talk about him he's a guy who came out of actually baseball he played nine seasons professional baseball never made it higher than single A mostly in independent ball but you know we, we continue to see in the sport of pickleball yes a lot of tennis players come over to play pickleball racquetball players come over to play pickleball but you're just seeing athletes people who, who just love being in the world of sport coming over and playing pickleball as well yeah, yeah. Oop, go ahead well, I was gonna I was gonna say my background's baseball as well and and that was the transition coming into it one of the things that Peter has is how fast his hands are and how much natural power he has from from baseball and I think that translates you know he's only done two US Opens he was playing amateur in the prior and he's already accelerated into pro play playing here today with Scott Moore so we'll see uh, whether or not they can make it into the semifinals. And then on the other side, you got Scott Crandall and Jose DeRisi. And you guys were saying a couple of years ago, you had to have a come on counter for Jose DeRisi with how many times he was yelling it. All right. So we need to, and we had a bet going on around who would get the most high, uh, the highest count. I can't remember who won, but we're, I'm sure. We were in the 20s. We are in the 20s somewhere. Yeah. And Jose DeRisi and, and Scott Crandall, certainly no strangers uh, to center courts either. A lot of um, fantastic. Fantastic results for them just to give you some overall wins and losses for both Scott Crandall has 194 career wins and 82 losses Jose Derisi 108 and 47 losses 108 and 47 that's pretty solid that's very solid so no surprise that we're not seeing them out here on center court today and the winner of this quarterfinal will move on to the semifinals where they will take on uh, the team of Merchant and Gingrich who have already punched their way into the semifinals so uh, we we will see them later on today here on Center Court as we'll take you all the way through uh, this entire division here today on this Wednesday, the fourth day of the tournament. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, it's uh, just the buzz in the air right now. The people excited to see what is going on. It's, uh, you know, it, it's palpable. There's no question about it. And Chad, I, I like, the, uh, or I, I wanted to ask you at the top of the show, you said this tournament was m maybe the main reason you guys moved to Naples, but I'm thinking there's a, a little bit more than just that as well. It's not too bad living down here is it <laughs> well I mean at, at the time we were living in in Michigan uh, we'd just come out of well we were still in the winter because after we went back from the US Open it was snowing in May 
But um, you know, we were looking at getting out of out of Michigan and and not knowing where we were going to go as far as going further south. And we ended up in Naples for the for the U.S. Open. We literally went back. We stayed here for two days after the tournament. We went back, quit our jobs the next day, <laughs> put our house on the market. Uh, it was under contract within two weeks, and then we had to figure out what we were going to do down here. And um, we ended up. We ended up, uh, you know, starting a pickleball academy right here at uh, at East Naples as as the U.S. Open Pickleball Academy with uh, Terry, Chris, and and Jim Ludwig, and the rest is kind of history. We've been down here since uh, since June of, of 2016, and and this is this is our home. I just can't believe how much time has fa uh, passed. It seems like you guys just, just oh, moved here, you I know? <laughs> <laughs> and at the yeah. time, people were telling us that we were crazy, that we we're going to start a pickleball academy because pickleball was not going to go anywhere. Well, and you think about how big the sport has become, and, uh, you know, it's just to uh, – and, and all the people that have roots to here. I mean, anybody that's anybody in the sport of pickleball came through Naples at some point. Yep. And uh, it is just uh, exciting to see. And you know what? That's the great thing. We, we You know, I mentioned the podcast. We talked about Annalie Waters having her kind of coming out party here on, on center court when we, we uh, put her on TV and um, you know look at what she has done so who are we going to see in the tournament this year it's uh, and it's not only the the matches that are taking place on championship court it's the matches throughout this facility uh, that are fantastic to be able to watch yeah we've got 59 other courts that are all playing uh, right now and uh, playing all week long as well so here we go. We are just about set to get this one underway. Best two out of three. And we'll start at 0, zero 2 as we always do, with the near court. And Pradenov will get us started with the first serve. And a little quick speed up there is effective, and we'll get the side out. A yeah, good speed up there from Crandall. That's something that he's going to look to do throughout this match. One thing that he has to be careful of is not speeding up too soon or, or overactive. Uh, he has times of running himself into trouble, but both Crandall and DeRisi able to utilize that, that quick speed up into the body. And now Crandall out of Los Angeles with the serve. The lob, Crandall chases it down, but into the net. So we'll move to 0-0-2. And Chad, we see so many people using the lob, you know, in nowadays as, as a way to really get people off of that uh, net, and even at the pro level. Uh, that ball is just a little long bit. Yeah, absolutely. The It used to be talking about that the lob was not a good shot. It was used by older players. But now that offensive lob is definitely used to be able to put yourself, you know, put your opponents back, get you back into a better position and control that kitchen line. Stay at 0-0-1 zero, zero, as the serve change sides. And the first point of the game belongs to Pradenov and Moore. Yeah, and that looked like great recognition by Pradenov in the way that he was able to just kind of speed it up low, get the pop up, and put it away. And that's going to be just short, so we'll move to 102. All right, one thing that, that stood out over the years, because remember in 2016 when we were here, it was, it was the paddle technology difference between now and 2016 and how much pace has come into the game. And I think that, you know, there's still a finesse component to the game as we get another point there, but I, I also think the, the power part of the game really has become more on the forefront than it was back then. Oh, absolutely, because the, the, the paddles allow you to do it now, whether it's power, whether it's spin, whether it's just the, the control that you get off of the paddle uh, now. It, it's really accelerated the game in the last couple of years. And the technology is still improving. Derisi tried to get out of the way, but I believe it did catch him. Or, or did he get out? There, there, do you see any? No, no, they, no they it caught, caught him. him. Yep. Yeah, it got him in the chest. So that'll make it 3 0 2. Crandall tried for a little finesse, couldn't get it over, and it moves to 4 0. 
And you guys talked a little bit about the paddles. You know, I always like to give this stat, and, you know, there's always new listeners out there, but 2014, there were only, like, two paddle manufacturers. You, fat, you know, now there's, like, these, like, you know, like, hundreds. There's, there's thousands now. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's excellent ball movement by Prodnov and Moore. Prodnov able to pull Crandall off the court. And as he's trying to get back in, Moore takes that ball early and gets him off balance again. Crandall and Derisi are going to take a timeout. We'll step aside for a quick moment. Crandall and Derisi are spelled wrong, FYI. This Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Total Pickleball, your one-stop pickleball shop. Free two-day shipping on the widest selection of pickleball products by Franklin X40, the official ball of the US Open Pickleball Championships. By Gamma Pickleball, the official grip of the US Open Pickleball Championships. And by Yola, for the champion in you. Back here in Naples and our final billboard there was Yola, one of the one of the great uh, paddle manufacturers that has come now into the forefront as well, and uh, just the technology continues to improve. And you know what? If you're going to get into pickleball, the great part is you don't have to drop a lot of money on your first paddle. You can get a beginner set for a reasonable amount and play with that for a while. But if you do invest in a good paddle, unless you lose your temper and start throwing it around, it'll last you a long time. That was, by the way, a, a, a vague reference to my 14-year-old son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's playing a lot now, huh? We do go play. Yeah, my, our son is actually playing in the U.S. Open this year. First tournament. Oh, that's fantastic. How old is he? Oh, uh, what he's, a put away he's there. He's nine. So a couple, couple of nine-year-olds taking on some 14-year-olds on, on, <laughs> on Friday and Saturday. My son does not take it seriously enough, but he he he's reached a point now where, and I've reached an age now where I actually have to try to beat him. If I want to beat him, I'll still beat him. But if I'm like if I'm slouching, he'll he'll beat me. I feel like Crandall and Derisi, they can't give back the serve here, and they do get a point. Prodnov just trying to rush that one. Never fully got the paddle underneath the ball. Came in a little too flat, straight in the net. Jose Derisi from the same hometown as Rob Cassidy, Rochester, New York. And that's out. So the side out will get it back over to Pradenov and Moore with a 5-1 lead. You know, we talk about Scott Moore a lot, too. That, I mean, uh, we should do a stat on the number of partners that he has had and just how successful he has been. That kind of another indicator of what kind of champion he is. Yeah. Nice put away there. Yeah, good angle there from, from Crandall. And, you know, it's interesting that you, you talked about that one. It is a new partnership for Moore and, and Prodanov, Crandall and Derisi have played together a lot over the last last couple of years. That'll be long, so they'll make it 2-5. I mean, do we do we overemphasize that? I mean, if you can play, I mean, I know there's a lot to be said for having that sixth sense and having that time on the court together, but I mean, I think if you're at this level, you probably have the learning curve pretty quick, isn't it? Uh, it is quick, but it's actually probably more important and at this level to have that comfort factor with, within your, your partner, knowing that you can take certain shots, knowing that they're going to understand and, and cover a position based off of the ball that you've hit. Um, so, yeah, coming in with new partners, definitely by this point, you know, Moore and Prodnov have, have figured out a lot of the stuff, but, uh, but yeah, the, the comfort factor for having a consistent partner, especially at the pro level, is, is huge. Well, they've closed the gap here a little bit. get two straight points after trailing five nothing but see if they can keep it at two five <laughs> how 
about that reaction? You gotta love that. <laughs> A little frustration toward the ball. Off the net. They play on. And then Crandall couldn't quite catch up to that cut it with the handle. And that's that's one of the issues there. You see Crandall trying to go so big that that paddle was all the way behind the body. Actually, you lose sight of it for a second. He catches it off the handle. And that one a favorable bounce off the net for Crandall. And caught proud enough a little bit off guard, so side out. Pradhanov takes care of that one. That's part of the, the raw baseball power there because that, that ball that's sitting kind of shoulder high is exactly like throwing a baseball with the, the motion, the quick snap of the wrist to finish through. What position were you, Chad? I was a pitcher, but I was a position guy for most of my college career as well. Uh, beautiful put away by Moore. Five straight serves without a point to show for it for Crandall and Derisi. And I'm really impressed with Pradnov's hands. And you know, we we're just talking about how he's new to uh, really to this pro level of play, and he looks like he's just a veteran out here. Yeah, excellent job closing the gap right there. Derisi thought he could. He saw a hole through the middle, but just with with how fast Pradnov's reaction speed is, uh, that hole's not always there, and it doesn't take a lot to get that ball back once somebody speeds it up at you. We'll catch a, a quick breather here from Naples. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Paddletech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takeya, hydration is an all-day game, and by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Save the date, April 13th to 20th, 2024. Love that it's already on the calendar, April 13th through 20th, 2024. So get into the ticket lottery or get into the lottery to play. Get down here, just be a part of this fantastic event. And right now, Teresi and Crandall in a big hole here as it's 7-2 in favor of Pradhanov and more. And Crandall and Teresi, that was their final time out, so they won't be able to stop the bleeding any further via the timeout. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, worth mentioning you got Pradnov and Moore, the seven seed here, and, and Crandall and uh, Derisi, the number two seed. And the chalk has pretty much carried in this tournament. Receiver, zero timeouts remaining. We're hearing from the truck. We haven't seen any fist pumps yet, guys, out of Derisi, but he hasn't had much to celebrate. <laughs> that ball was just a little wide. It looked, it, it looked like Crandall almost caught the line there, but again, when you're down and you're trying to do too much and you're trying to be too fine and, and really push the issue or press the, press the issue, that's where even more errors come in. The lob by Derisi and Moore goes five hole. And that's the danger of throwing up a lob that just goes too short. Well, it's also bad positioning as well. You're, you're throwing up a lob through the middle of a court straight to Moore's forehand. Better position there is, is probably over the left shoulder of Prodanov. Takes Moore out of the out of the uh, out of his position, or if Prodanov tries to hit it, it's a it's a weaker backhand overhead. Moore thought he was going to have an opportunity to put one away there, but he misses it, and so we'll move to 9-2-2. Two, two. 
I got to tell you, I'm so glad to be here again with you, Chad, and get all your insights. There. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world, <laughs> Melissa. Uh, Teresi couldn't get that. That's going to take us to game point. How about the efficiency here of Pradenov and Moore? They've only had eight serves that haven't resulted in a point out of 18 serves in this match. And they'll make it 11 out of 19 to close out game one. 11-2, Pradhanov and Moore take the early advantage here in this best of three from Naples. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Back here in East Naples Community Park, home of the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville. Dave Benz, Melissa McCurley, Chad Edwards, thrilled to have you along on day four of this fantastic tournament. Yeah, we have referee Reg Von Drecht officiating this match. We actually have 59 referees here refereeing what will be over 5,500 matches uh, when the tournament completes. Uh, it's only a couple of matches. <laughs> only a couple, that's it. <laughs> Side switch between games, and now Crandall and Derisi are in the near court, and they start off with the serve, and they no longer have the serve. They have not had a lead in this match. Fell behind 5 nothing. Well, they actually won that oh, point. Oh, no, sorry, that one, one was zero. long. Yes, my <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Now they've got the lead and won so, nothing. Uh, but then you jinx them. They just dumped it into the net. But I, I will say that Crandall and Derisi need to move the ball around a little bit more, and they need to be patient on their speed-ups. They were trying to do too much in game one, and just too many errors, too many missed balls into the net. Prodnov with the nice backhand does just land in. Yeah, and I gotta wonder what these two talked about because you know we talk about Prodnov, he's really an unknown to them, and how do how does he play, and how do they put up a strategy against him? That's that's the difficulty playing against a a newer player. And Prodnov gets out of the way. It's a bad decision as Derisi's shot does land in. I'll uh, move it to one one two. How much film study do the players at this level do, Chad? Uh, for the pro level, quite a lot. But you know, again, when you're talking about Prodanov and, and he hasn't played a whole lot of, uh, of, of pro events, that's not something you can go back and watch film on either uh, without. It's not readily available on YouTube. No. A little backhand misses long. So move it to 2-1. Uh, oh, no, he said, he, he said he said it was in. Yeah. All right. Probably, probably enough cold, though. Yeah. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Good thing I'm not a line judge today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got our first foot fought call. And I think, Chad, you know, certainly if Derisi and Crandall can find themselves in a slower paced game, getting more uh, with the kitchen and the dink and not speeding it up too quickly, I think it'll fare better for them in game two. Derisi and Prodnov going back and forth right now. And the speed up by Prodnov is deep. And a timeout is going to be taken here by Prodnov and Moore. So 3-1 here in game two.
The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. By Zing Zang. The number one Bloody Mary brand is on fire with new Zing Zang Blazing Bloody Mary. By Deco Turf, the official pickleball court surface of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. By Franklin, the official bag of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And remember, you can purchase the official U.S. Open Pickleball Championships apparel at kitchpickleball.com. Three-one here in game two. Prodenov and Moore, first time they've had to use a timeout in this match. Yeah, and Derisi and Crandall are really settling it in and looking a lot more comfortable than they did in game one. Yeah, and, and to your point earlier, as, as far as getting some ball movement and settling into it and not trying to do too much, Moore wants the ball sped, out, sped up at him. Prodenov is a baseball guy. You always want that ball sped up because it feeds into your fast reflexes and shorter compact swing. So they definitely have to pick their spots on what they want to speed up at. There's a speed up by Crandall. <laughs> it's like right on or, cue. Or a good shake and bake with the drive <laughs> into the body and more just not able to get on top of you. See the paddle go back into that chest. Crandall reading it well, stepping up and then going with the attack at Prodanov. Moves it to 4-1. Crandall with the lob, Moore tracks it down. Uh, what a shot there. Beautiful touch exhibited by Crandall. So we've seen the power and the finesse. Yeah, that was a good medium pace ball. So he sped a ball up into the body of Moore there and then he makes it look like he's gonna hit it just as hard, but it's a medium pace roll that as they let that ball go, it just ends up falling inside the baseline. And that's deep, so that's going to move it to 6-1. It was 1-1 one, one when they took over the serve. So they've reeled off five in a row. Make it six in a row. And that's the second attack from Crandall. One to Moore, one to Prodnov there. We see... The shoulders go up around the ears and it brings that paddle back into the body. It's so difficult to keep the ball down if that paddle gets so close. The lob. Another lob. Oh, what a great shot by Prodnov. He wasn't sure if he was going to try and track it down. He said, I, I can get this one in the air. Yeah, it was a beautiful uh, lob, back-to-back -back lobs, and uh, yeah, that little bit of indecision there, but it was right at the right height for him to be able to make a play on the ball. I'd say that was a good uh, serve opportunity for for Team uh, Crandall and Derisi, though. They scored six points to open up this 7-1 lead. Good misdirect from Prodanov. Making it look like he's going to continue in that cross-court dink with Crandall. And then it's just an opening of the, of the palm, an opening of the face of the paddle to the right shoulder at Derisi. Oh, Derisi just missed fires. So it tightens up here at 3-7. I mentioned Scott Moore is from Colorado Springs. He's fluent in Japanese and Spanish. Yep, and uh, he's a new grandfather as well. He's uh, had a couple of grandkids over this past year. So a lot of exciting things going on in Scott's life. Is he still doing the international pickleball trips? He is. Happy to hear that didn't slow down because of COVID. I'm sure it slowed down, but it's back on. Yeah, it's back on. And you know, his son, Daniel Moore, who lives over in Japan, heads up a lot of those. I plan to try to get one on myself one day. I wouldn't be too shabby mm -mm. going over to Japan and playing some pickleball. Meantime, it's tightened up here at 4-7. 4 7 Pradenov with the serve. Pradenov is, is a local. Marco Island is home for him. But the score is going to stay 
at 4-7. And now the side out, 7-4 as Crandall and Derisi take over. That's the impatience that Crandall can't have right there. It was very ambitious with how far he was reaching out to try to keep that ball in. Very, very difficult to try to roll after that full extension. 7-4-2 after the misfire by Crandall. And that's good teamwork, Teresi. Crandall was going to hit it. Teresi called him off. Yeah, not easy to do. He'd already uh, left his feet, you know, in the air looking to get an overhead slam. Oh, great job to catch up to that one, keep it alive by Crandall, but then Derisi unable to extend the opportunity. So the serve back over to Pradenov and Moore at 4-8. Four, 4-8-1. Eight. Four, eight, And now it'll tighten up a little further. And the side spin on that ball from the drop for Scott Moore kind of threw Derisi off a little bit. You saw it, saw it just come back into his body and jam him up. Derisi, I was waiting for a come on on that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm wondering. We'll have to ask him if after that whole, you know, counting of his fist pumps, if he just stopped doing it after that. You maybe, guys, you guys got into his head. No, I, I saw him enough in the in the last 12 months since uh, since the last U.S. Open. He continues to do it, but he's just not not at that point of being fired up enough yet. That does just miss. That was a good spot from Prodanov going across the going across the body of Crandall, but just pulling it a little too far, missing that ball wide. Teresi and Pradnov going back and forth, showing some patience here. Then the speed up and eventually one for Crandall and Teresi, and that puts them on the precipice of winning this game, 10-5 game point. Teresi baited Pradnov into trying to speed that one up. Crandall sitting all over the counterattack. More able to catch up to that one off the net to keep it alive. And then the lob does catch in. Moran Pradenov out of position, and Crandall takes advantage with the overhead. Yeah, we saw Derisi throw up a lob in game one. Not the best position, feeding that middle ball, that forehand to Moore. But in game two here, Crandall's been the one that is, it has started that lob and he's hit that same spot over the left shoulder of Prodanov each time. That one able to cause a little bit of confusion and open up that hole for the big overhead put away. Scott Crandall feeling pretty good right now. As he and Derisi have drawn even, we will have a third and decisive game coming your way from Naples. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Back here at East Naples Community Park, time for game three of this quarterfinal men's senior pro doubles match. And uh, guys, uh, I can't help but notice the team that is in the near court is outscoring the team in the far court so far in this match 22 to 7. You making anything of that? 
I know I've not really been able to make anything of that at this point. I mean, there is a little breeze in here, but, uh, you know, nothing that would be significant to influence the play. It's a beautiful day here in Naples. Temperature 83 degrees. Humidity low for Naples. <laughs> And you can't see in the background, top of your screen, the flags are blown a little bit. But, I mean, this this shade structure is, is so great at also blocking the wind. I, I don't really think that on barring, you know, gale force winds, that that's much of a factor either. Yeah, so I don't know, Chad. You, you see anything? I mean, it seemed like, you know, that end over there felt a little more pressure than, than down here. Yeah, I think it's the the far end where, where Crandall and uh, Derisi are is a little bit more susceptible to some wind because we don't you don't have the full stands blocking it. But... Uh, some great oh. defense play, uh, played by Moore there, but Pradenov unable to keep it going. Yeah, but we got our first Jerisi number one. <laughs> so that, so that should tell you a little bit about how much he's feeling going into game three and how important it is here that they get off to a quick start. By the way, in that second game, as they uh, give it up here on the side out, that second game they they scored a point on 11 of 16 serves. Wow, it's pretty good. That's excellent. Dave Benz, our play-by-play -play and statistician. <laughs> well, it only took me about seven years to figure out a system to somehow keep score of, of pickleball. <laughs> People do say that's the most complete or complex part of learning the sport of pickleball is learning how to score it. Pradenov, or Crandall and Pradenov going back and forth. And then the speed up by Crandall and Moore couldn't catch up to it. And it's a good speed up there from Crandall. Kind of just lulled Moore and Pradenov to sleep there. Got, it, got the dead dink that just sat in front of him. Perfect time to speed up into the body of Moore. They call a fault. And they could say Derisi was the the guilty party yeah. there. And he he knows it too, I guess, so he's not getting any argument yeah. from him at all. Take another look, see if you can see it here. Yeah, it's right foot, right yeah. toe. Good call by the ref. That's, I mean, that's an issue right there with, with for Prodnov as far as he just was not ready for that pop-up. You saw him standing straight up, tried to get on top of it, but as that paddle goes back behind you, you pull across the body. That's the risk of, of missing that ball wide. And they're going to take an early timeout. We'll catch our breath for a second. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro and by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Margaritaville does power these Minto US Open Pickleball Championships. The Franklin X40 is the ball being used here in Naples, Florida. And Rodinov and Moore are using that early time out here. They don't want to fall too far behind against Crandall and Derisi, who, by the way, will go on to the more favorable statistically side of the court uh, once this gets to six for either team. And that one into the net, so the timeout serves its purpose as Pradenov and Moore will get the serve back. A yeah, good spot from Pradenov. Derisi was sitting on the backhand side, so he went up at that right shoulder. Moore just caught with his feet still moving. Zero, two, two. 
Prodding out the speed up to Reese into the net. Yes. And that'll move it to one, two. Almost identical speed up there. This time just going a little bit lower to the right hip. But again, DeRisi sitting on that backhand side a little too much. Prodnov going cross body. Oh, more of the quick hands that time. So it looks like Moore and Prodnov had a little discussion during that timeout that they were going to be more aggressive, put some pressure on Crandall and Derisi. Again, the winner of this game moves on to the semifinals. And Derisi liked what he saw, he didn't like the execution. And David, you said they'll move on to the semifinal and waiting in the semifinals, Altoff Merchant, who is new to the senior pro division this year, has been playing pro. He just reached that magical age and Dan Gingrich. Is it a magical age? It is. <laughs> More into the net. Well, pickleball wise, you're kind of in limbo from 45 to 50. That's true, because you're probably not physically able to dominate like you were before you were 45. <laughs> well, when, you, when you're playing with 20, well, for some of the females, you're playing with a 16-year-old <laughs> that's got a lot of power and moves well, and, and you're in uh, mid to later 40s. It's, the brain wants to do what the body can't. Yeah. You hit 50, it's kind of like the reset button, right? And then all of a sudden, the young, you're the young kid. Oh. Well, Crandall tried the lob. Prodnov was able to hit it where Derisi couldn't catch up to it. Yeah. Well, Scott Moore had vacated that part of the court, and Derisi, Derisi, great vision to put it right there and get a point. Yeah, I'm not really sure what was going on with that uh, miss, mix miss up there. Yeah, missed signal. Okay. Four, three, two. A reaction out of Teresi there vocally. Oh, and then how about that back pedaling and he hits it for the winner. Mentioned Jose DeRisi out of Rochester, New York. I'm going to have to ask him if he's uh, an aficionado of the garbage plate at Nick Tahoe's in Rochester, New York. People who are from that part of the country are nodding their heads right now, and people who are not are like, what is he talking about? Like me, right? I'm looking at you like, what? It's uh, it's the ultimate late-night comfort food. As Crandall goes five-hole, Pradinov couldn't catch up. That'll make it 6-3. And... Oh, Time out being taken here as you take a look at Crandall. Putting it at the feet, it's always a good decision. The Minto US Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville are brought to you by Total Pickleball, your one-stop pickleball shop. Free two-day shipping on the widest selection of pickleball products by Franklin X40 the official ball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships by Gamma Pickleball, the official grip of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, and by Yola for the champion in you. Well, Nick Tahoe's is not an official sponsor of this tournament, but if they wanted to send down some garbage plates, I'd be okay with that. So your garbage plate, you're going there normally about probably the ideal time is, is 3 a.m., and uh, you're getting either cheeseburgers, hamburgers, or hot dogs. You get two of each, no buns. Uh, you get either macaroni salad or cold baked beans. 
and then there's some home fries, and they've got this hot onion sauce they put on there, and then for extra measure, they'll throw, scrape a little like grease off of the fryer for you and throw it on. Uh, but the kicker is they give you this amazing bread, and then you pour it all in Tabasco sauce, and you sit there, and you and you, you down it at 3 a.m. Of course, it, it goes down a lot better when you're a college student than, than when you're in your 50s. I was going to say, we, we, we had something similar with uh, when I was in California in, in college, and the, if you tried to eat it when you were sober, the grease uh, kind of upset your stomach more than anything else. Uh, it was a, a fantastic spot to go when I was back in those days. Went to college in Rochester for a year. You, you lost me at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, Melissa's been in bed for seven hours by that yeah, time. That, that, that's close to the wake-up time. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a side out there, so much needed stop out of the timeout. Pradenov and Moore are trying to dig out of this hole here at 3-6. And it'll move to 3-6-2. That's the right ball to drive from Prodanov, but just didn't step up and take that early enough. Three, six, uh, great speed up by Derisi. So the serve back over to Crandall and Derisi with this 6 3 lead. Six, three, one. Lob by Crandall, Prodnov, great job to track it down. And Moore finally ends the exchange. And that gets this crowd going. I mean, they're really, really excited to see that particular play, but what a great shot of a rundown of a lob right here. Waiting for it to come down and go a great drop shot back into the kitchen. Well done by Prodnov. So 6-3-2, and the side out gets it back over to Crandall and Moore. Three, six, one. Oh. Great decision to let it go. And it's really fun seeing the crowd to get into this. You're hearing the ooing and the awing. I'm not sure I've heard oohs and ahs that loud ever on championship court here. Our famous Zing Zang championship court. Derisi was trying to set up potentially for an Ernie and didn't develop. More of the speed up. Crandall goes back to that lob again. Oh, what a put away by Derisi. Yeah, another fist pump there from Derisi, but this time better job clearing his body. You see that quick shuffle to the side and able to open up that forehand. Prodnov got him a couple of times, but this time not able to go cross body with it. So 6-3. One here. Yeah! And finally, they make it 7-3. We had gone seven straight serves without a point before that one. 7-3-1. And Crandall loves that lob. Prodnov saying, I'm ready for it. Yeah, he missed on the forehand side on that one. Wasn't able to disguise it as well either. Ball that kind of tried to get a little too much lift on it. Prodnov recognizing it quickly with the, big, with the quick shuffle step. And 
The patience pays off that time for Proudnov and Moore. They force the side out. It's Crandall eventually with the unforced error. Crandall was actually out in front of that counter attack, recognized that Maul was going to speed it up into his body and kind of jumped at it a little too quickly, got on top of it, missing it down into the net. 4-7. And in the net for Pradnov. So something that interesting happened right there. Crandall had been hitting so many lobs that Prodnov took a step back away from the kitchen line anticipating another lob. So then once that ball that was a little bit shorter that he tried to speed up, he wasn't up at his regular position and able to catch that ball high enough. So even though Crandall missed a couple of those lobs or put him in bad positions, it's now caused Prodnov to, to move out of position a little bit, trying to anticipate that lob. The game within the game. Crandall, though, unable to get that one over the net, so it'll move it to 5-7-2. It's kind of like when you got a big shot blocker in the middle in basketball, right? I mean, he blocks a couple of shots a couple of times, and maybe one's even a goaltend, but you're going to go in there and think about it. Yep. Well, it's, it's the same thing with... We've seen both Derisi and Crandall kind of fake that Ernie attempt. When that ball goes out wide, just the movement creates some indecision or, or a directional change that can create a, a, a pop-up or, or a ball into the net. That one doesn't get over, so 8-5. Crandall and Derisi now just three points away from moving on to the semis. Rodden and Moore do have one timeout remaining because that second stoppage was actually for the side switch. They play on the lob. Prodnov was ready for it. Great defense. And then Teresi oh, finally misfires. How about that exchange, though? <laughs> that was, I mean, we've seen a little bit of all in that particular exchange there. It, uh, uh, some good, good speed ups. Well, on second server, you have eight. You yeah, Derisi just going for a little too much after that gap eight, had been five, opened two. up down the line. Eight five two. The lob. And that one goes a little bit long on Scott Crandall. So that'll force the side out. Moore and Prodnov needing to close the gap here. They have eight, or, sorry, you have eight. Right. Yeah. Call Need to reel off a couple of points. Nice defensive shot there by Crandall. Uh, and then that catches the tape and won't go over. Yeah, Moore knew Derisi was going to hit it in that spot, but didn't get the paddle far enough out in front. Good speed up there. Five, eight, two. That'll be long. So they do not close the gap. And 8-5, it'll go back over to Crandall and Derisi. Still three away from moving on. 8-5-1. Yeah, good spot there for more. Little shake and bake action from Derisi and Crandall, but Crandall going a little too much middle.
Crandall hits it long. So Crandall and Derisi have only scored two points out of their last 11 serves. Yeah, it's a little bit of what we saw in game one from Derisi and Crandall. They're, they're trying to speed up a lot of balls, or Crandall's throwing up a lot of those lobs, but they're not choosing the right balls and the right opportunity for either of those. That'll be wide, so that'll make it That's going to be wide. Yeah, but that was an excellent thought by Pradnov. You know, he was able to take an inside out, just go right over the shoulder of Derisi. It was an off speed shot, just went a little wide on him. Six, eight, two. Peter Pradnov first started playing pickleball in 2019. Now move it to seven, eight. So just a single point separating these two now. And we have a brand new match, 8-8 eight, eight here in game three. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised if we see this timeout eight, and here eight, we go eight, soon, because you can really tighten up at 8-8 eight, eight, uh, here. You can feel a little bit of the tension coming in on, on this side of the court. Take a minute and think about it. First timeout for Crandall and Derisi. That means each team has one remaining here in this match. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball, experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Tied at 8-8. Eight, eight. And you know, guys, I don't want to I don't want to linger too much on the side of the court thing, but I've mentioned that you know there's only been two points scored by Crandall and Derisi out of their last eleven serves. All eleven of those have come since the side switch. Yeah, but I, you know, I think in watching what we've been watching here, it's typically the you know people playing on this site, the, the near court uh, to us, um, that are firing better. Yes, firing better, absolutely. So Chad, what do you think? Coming out of a timeout like this, I mean, they're not really doing anything wrong. They've been executing pretty well. Their errors have been pretty low. Um, you know, it is at eight eight. Is this more just a discussion about? Uh, I, I, I think the discussion that they had right there is just settling back in, not to try to force the issue, not to try to speed up too many balls. Or outside of the right time, allow <laughs> Prodanov and more to try to do that. And we see Prodanov go a little too big with that one. But yeah, Derisi and Crandall had um, success when they were moving the ball around and, and just establishing the point. Well, Derisi and Crandall to serve back. Move it to 882 though. Eight, eight, oh, the wind knocked it down. That's a ball pro <laughs> Yeah, more and Pradanov gonna take a timeout now. That's a ball Pradanov has the hit, whether he thinks that it might be just going out or not. That ball's sitting up too easily. Another look. It did look like it was going to go out. I think you're right. The wind did play a factor in favor of Crandall and Derisi. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Paddletech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takea. Hydration is an all-day game, and by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Save the date. 
April 13th to 20th, 2024. And here in Naples, and that was the final timeout for Prodanov and Moore. Crandall and Derisi still have one timeout remaining. But they are two points away from moving on. Great angle play by Moore. Derisi able to defend it, but then right down Broadway to get the side out. And David, you talk about the crowds here. I mean, this is a sold out crowd here on Zing Zang Championship Court Eight, nine, one. all throughout the, the weekend. Trying to draw even our Pradnov and Moore. Speed up and then the slow down. Yeah! And then the unforced error. So move it to 892. By the way, guys, Pradnov, I'm wondering, is this like the reverse of you know Lambeau Field? The the O-linemen go without any uh, you know extra layers on when it's you know 22 below zero. And Pradnov, meantime, he's got the long sleeves on here in the Florida heat. UV shots. It's a fishing shirt right there. It's no <laughs> it's no no hotter than a regular t-shirt, but Great defense being played, but they couldn't keep it up. And the side out gets it back to Crandall Derisi, two points away. And how pumped up were they, Chad? I mean, we did, we just saw three fist pumps in a row. Jose's trying to catch those up for us on our counter. <laughs> Glad they're tracking that in the truck. Yeah, very good job from Derisi there. You saw him just hold that paddle out in front. He knew he was going to attack it by, by how high that ball sat, but he was sitting and waiting to read what Prodnov and Moore were going to do to pick his spot. Takes us to match point. And there it is. The game and the match. Go to Crandall and Derisi, and Derisi with seven fist pumps in a span of about 70 seconds. <laughs> and then he got one more as he was coming off the court. Pretty pumped up as they head on to the semifinals. Oh, we got the the fist pump counter coming back right there. That's a double fist pump, triple fist pump. <laughs> <laughs> so 2-11, 11-5, 11-5. Jose Derisi and Scott Crandall moving on. We will see them again later on today here on this Zing Zang Championship Court as they got a berth in the semifinals. Don't go anywhere. Our coverage from Naples continues after this quick timeout. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Welcome back to Naples, Florida. We have reached our first semifinal in the men's senior pro doubles division. And the number one seed, Dave Weinbach, and his fantastic teammate, John Sperling. And there's a look at Dave Weinbach, who has been such a, a great ambassador of the sport of pickleball, in addition to being a fantastic player over his pickleball career. And they will take on the team of Andren and Witzkin, who we saw in that first match that we started our day with, with our bonus coverage here from Naples, Florida. And glad you could be along with us as we continue our coverage on day four of this 
fantastic tournament. And let's talk a little bit about John Sperling out of the Villages, Florida, up the road, just a little bit north of Orlando. The Village is uh, really one of the uh, original places that Terry Graham and Chris Yvonne were, were thinking about possibly putting this tournament uh, in the early stages before they finally decided on Naples and Melissa McCurley. But uh, John Sperling, uh, he has had some success here in the past. Yeah, it's a, certainly a local local favorite here and uh, here on the Zing Zang Championship Court. All these guys are pumped up about being here. Today is senior day, really, here at the U.S. Open for the men uh, and the pro division. So this day is all about them. And another long shirt there for you. And uh, the other the other side, you're going to have Rick, Rick Witzkin, uh, Witzkin and uh, Andren, uh, Stefan Andren are, are going to be teamed up as well. So uh, this should be pretty good. You got the one seed against the five seed and Rick Witzkin, we saw him in, in that bonus coverage out of Giants, Zionsville, Indiana. And Chad, he's also a guy who uh, he'll give you a couple of come ons and show some emotion. Yeah, he's uh I've done a lot of commentary of, of Rick's uh, matches, and something that you'll note is that uh, his his little grunts change uh, change pitch and change frequency depending on uh, on how hard he's hitting the ball. So it's not something you can have a tell on, but but he likes to make a noise after every time he hits a ball. He likes to get fired up, and. Uh, He's looking to uh, to to get his partner Stefan fired up as well. We saw, like you said, we saw a little bit of that uh, as we came into the coverage today. Rick Witzkin says it's tough for the Northerners to adjust to the heat on our bio sheet. Here's some of the uh, final stats from that last match. 47 unforced errors by Crandall and Derisi didn't really slow them down. Uh, they they took advantage of their opportunities in winning that in winning that match and moving on to the semifinals. And we're going to step aside. When we come back, we will have our first semifinal match coming your way. Stay with us from East Naples Community Park. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Naples, Florida as we are just about set to get this semi-final match underway. Stefan Andren and Rick Witzkin are the five seed and taking on the one seed of John Sperling and Dave Weinbach. And, and Dave Weinbach, I, wow, I mean, he's certainly a, a legend around pickleball, but certainly here at the U.S. Open, being the very first to win the very first U.S. Open back in 2016. Back then, it wasn't senior pro for him. He was in the men's pro doubles, winning with Kyle Yates. And you know, it's funny, I was just going to mention that. I actually went back in the last month or so and, and looked at some of the, the footage from that first tournament. Well, it was because when I was putting together the, the podcast that uh, we did with Chris and Terry, I was going back and looking at some some of it and uh, yeah the, just the emotion out of Dave and the way that he plays the sport um, you know I said it, it, he, he's been a true ambassador of the sport for so long and it's uh, you know just a pleasure to be able to watch him play the game with such passion yeah and he does have that passion it doesn't and he's always Dave right it's Dave on all the time you know back <laughs> in, in that first uh, uh, coverage that you're talking about that was before this nice big canopy as well it was just a big wide that was when everybody was court. baking sitting outside in the stands <laughs> right <laughs> and I'll, I really never forget it. I was sitting over in the uh, area, you know, outside the courts over here in a building where I was running the tournament at the time, and we had just put the match out. And it was like 20 minutes later, I think it was 23 minutes to be exact, I heard the announcer come on and say, you know, congratulations to the men's doubles U.S. Open winners, yeah. Cal Yates. And, and I thought, holy, really? That was 23 it was, minutes. It was that quick. It was that quick. Yeah, they won back-to-back uh, -back titles yeah, there they, in U1 and U2. Yeah, they sure did. Well, we are ready to get this one underway. Weinbach and Sperling will start with the serve in the near court at 002. And 
They, they were so dialed in, they were ready to start the match without actually officially greeting each other. Weinbach is all business. He's passionate, but he, he wants to win. There's no question. And here we go. It's 0 0 2. Sperling putting it at the feet of Andren. And defense keeps it alive. And then a little bit too deep. So an early 1 0 lead here for Sperling and Weinbach. A yeah, nice little scorpion there from Sperling in the middle of that one. Got crossed up a little bit. Wasn't expecting Andre to get that ball back. But. Lob by Sperling. Point stays alive. Witzkin catches up with that, and then look at, there's the early reaction out of Weinbach. As if to say, what do you expect me to do? <laughs> and we'll certainly see a lot of emotion on this court for this, this match. You got Dave Weinbach, you got Rick Witzkin, two of the highest energy players on the tour today. Weinbach out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Weinbach couldn't catch up to that one. Advantage Witzkin on that exchange. Yeah, it's a good spot from Witzkin. If he goes to the left at all, Weinbach's all over. It still has some of the fastest hands, but his anticipation is what gets in there. Witzkin going a little bit more crossbody onto the forehand side. So 0-2-1. First service opportunity here for Andren and Witzkin. Uh oh, <laughs> which can't get tapped. <laughs> he acts like as if, as if he'd been shot. And so uh, the emotions are also going to come with the dramatics. Yeah, that's not going to be the the last time that uh, Witzkin's going to get sniped right there. He's going to end up on the ground a few times throughout this one. Witzkin out of Zionsville, Indiana, but grew up in Indianapolis. And. Uh, Side out gets it back over to Sperling and Weinbach. There's zero one. Oh, the ball's just wide from Andrin. There's zero one. Great defense by Sperling, but eventually won by Andren. You want to talk a little bit more about Dave's um, dominance in the sport, his, his career wins and losses. Listen to this, 237 wins, 61 losses in men's senior pro doubles. And most of those 61s very deep in the tournament. Yes. That'll move it to four nothing to start this first game. Yeah, good reach in there from Spelling. Didn't try to do too much with it. Just picked his spot and took away the anticipation and the timing for Witzkin and Andren. and Sperling back and forth here. And then the misfire by Sperling. Sperling had the, had the spot. Witzkin tried to cover the line and left that hole in the middle. Sperling just got a little too flat with that swing. Didn't quite get the paddle ahead underneath. 
Quickly moves to the second serve. Zero four two. And that's <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's a new meaning to partner communication. <laughs> Don't you dare! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Dave throwing a little uh, a little <laughs> comments back my way. Moses heard that a million times from me. Yeah, I think Dave wants to commentate in addition to play simultaneously. Yeah, he certainly enjoys that. <laughs> Off the net, Sperling catches up with it. Wow, how about the defense on display? And then finally, Witzke. <laughs> uh, and these guys are going to put on a show, you know, not only on the court, but with their dramatics. And, and now they'll shoot a little dance move. Berlin got oh, yeah. a gift off the net, but then missed fires. Yeah, it's not as easy to adjust to that one popping up as it looks, but the ball just got a little bit behind Sperling. And Witzkin again with the power and the vocalism. And finally a point for Andre and Witzkin. How about that defense wow. by Witzkin? Turns the defense into offense and another point. Yeah, excellent hands there from Witzkin. Protecting that body, turning side on a little bit just to get a little more power on the swing. Into the net, and suddenly it's 3 4. And then more expressionism out of Witzkin. Witzkin, who says his favorite hobbies other than pickleball are building fire pits. He likes chainsaws and four wheelers. The chainsaw <laughs> seems to make sense. <laughs> uh, that's certainly a variety, but just then he looked like he might even be into some ballet. <laughs> yes, he didn't. He did not put ballet. <laughs> he says his go-to karaoke song is "We Are Family." Side out. And the side out. So Sperling and Weinbach still with the lead here, but just by a point now. Four, three, one. Yeah, and Chad, I was glad to be able to see this for just a moment to Andrew, because a lot of times people, when they had him backed off the net, he was doing a great job of keeping him back there. You don't ever want to invite your opponent to come up to the net. Yeah, and, and with that, he wasn't overhitting at either. The focus more was on the spin and on the timing. The only time that where you're going to potentially rethink the issue the, or the, the thought of keeping them back is if one of Sperling's balls had have gotten down below the net, then we change it into you know respecting it going a little bit shorter. You're no longer able to keep them back. But as long as that ball is above the net, absolutely. Keep, keep going hard, keep pressing, keep pushing them back. Four, four, one. Nice shot there. As Witzkin tips his cap. It's a 4 4 2. Four straight points rolled off here by 
Andre and Witzkin after trailing four nothing. Bach fakes the Ernie. And another point for Andre Nowitzkin, who make it a 5-4 lead. Yeah, it's a good trigger pull there from Andre. That ball sat up just enough that he could get that paddle head underneath, but he went up high into the center mass on Spurling. Spurling not able to get on top of it. So serving with the lead for the first time in this match. And Sperling puts it right at the feet of Witzkin to force the side out. Four, five, one. Sperling couldn't really catch up to that one out of bounds. Make it 4-5-2. Six straight serve opportunities for Weinbach and Sperling without a point. And that drought finally ends. Yeah, and that was a better spot for for spelling the speed up there compared to the speed up that he had on Andrin. He was able to change direction and go across the body on Witzkin. Five, five, two. So knotted up again, five five two. That's two out of three for Berth in the finals. Skin doing it all to force the side out. Yeah, Witzkin and Andrin getting getting a little uh, little upset at Weinbach right there. He smashed the ball back at them after taking one off the leg. Yeah, and he's definitely going to have to smash it because you know Dave Weinbach is one of the best uh, net hand player you know in all of pickleball. Move to five five two. Stefan Andrin, originally from Stockholm, Sweden. Now lives in Portland, Oregon, down the middle and the side out. A good disguise there from Weinbach. Witzkin thought he was going to go cross court with it. Will not get over, so move to 5-5-2. Five, five, two. Five, five, two. Oh. Little miscommunication there. And Sperling tried to come up with it, but was too late on the reaction. Yeah, Spurling thought Weinbach was going to come back over and take that one. Five-five-two. Five, five, That'll be long. So side out. Six straight serves combined now without a point. Scoring's been at a premium in this semifinal match. 
It's still in game one. It's a little too much wrist in that one for Weinbach. Trying to just bump it up and over the net. And Andre is deep. So Sperling and Weinbach to one seat back in front now. And Andre can't get it across the tape, so consecutive points by Sperling and Weinbach will force Andre and Witzkin to use a timeout. We will catch our breath for a moment as well. U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Nice crowd on hand here in Naples, Florida. Sold out on Zing Zang Championship Court. And it will be really standing room only all week long here in Naples, Florida. Weather, I mean, uh, you guys mentioned it. I know, I know there was some bad weather here earlier this week, but uh, this weather today is fantastic. Uh, it's beautiful in the uh, low 80s. Little humidity for Naples, Florida. A bit of a breeze, but uh, not anything that's going to affect the play. So Sperling and Weinbach out of that timeout. They've reeled off consecutive points here to open up this 7-5 lead. We got the referee Ron West, County Commissioner out of Indianapolis, Indiana. He did just say 751, it's 752, and that's the side out. And I see now Weinbach and Sperling were confused because he did say 751, but it was 752, and it should be a side out. And now they get it correct. Yeah, I think he just called it wrong. He certainly had it right on his score sheet. There's Ron. Good look at Ron. Snowbirds here in Florida. And Weinbach is deep. So tightens it up to 6 7. Oh, painting the line is Dave Weinbach. Yeah, tough to go hands battle with both Spelling and Weinbach right there. So 6-7-2 is Andren will take over the serve. And that is deep on the return by Sperling. He turns around and looks at the wind. I don't, can you actually no. look at wind? I guess look. I think he was hoping there was a breeze somewhere that didn't exist. <laughs> And that one's staying in, too. And just like that, Andre and Witzkin surge back in front at 8-7-2. 8-7-2. Eight, seven, Side out after Andre and misfires. Yeah, I actually thought he was going to change direction on that one. Looked like he was going to flick it back up at Weinbach, and then he decided to go back cross court. Seven, eight, one. Difficult to be consistent when you change your mind in the middle of your swing. Everybody up to the kitchen line now. Oh, 
And Weinbach to finesse and then the finish. And that'll knot it back up at eight. Eight, eight, one. by Sperling. How good was this? Yeah, it was you know, really a perfectly placed ball for an Ernie going out wide. Sperling was looking for it. Witzkin wasn't in a position to try to defend it. So Sperling and Weinbach consecutive points now to open up this 9-8 lead. Kind of looking at his feet. I don't know what he was trying to do. Well, that's, that's not the best position to try to attack from right there. The ball's dropping. Has to try to swing up on it. Would have put himself in position in bad position even if it had it going over the net. 9-8-2. And it'll move to 8-9 on the side out. Nine more. And Weinbach puts it away. Yeah, good reach in and speed up there from Sperling. Forcing that pop up, Weinbach. Easy ball to get on top of right there. That's long. So 9-9, nine, nine. this game has been within a couple of points the entire way, except for the very beginning when Weinbach and Sperling got off to that 4 nothing lead. But other than that, it's been nip and tuck. Nine, eight, one. Still 9-8. Nine, eight. Well, you, I stand corrected. Thank you, Chad. Oh, Witzkin tried to do too much with that ball. All he had to do was get underneath it, speed it up into the body of Sperling. But he tried to slide that with a little bit of misdirect, and there just wasn't enough height on it. And that's going to move it to 10-8 here. 10-8-1. The lob, Andren, a backhanded flick at it's no good. That's going to end game one. So Weinbach and Sperling, they had to fight for it, but they pull it away late and they win it. 11-8 game one in this best of three with a berth in the finals on the line. Game two coming your way in just a moment from Naples as we take a look at the final point heading into this break. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Well, Witzkin and Andre, they battled valiantly in that first game, but they ultimate fall, ultimately fall 11 to 8. The serve changed its side 17 times in that first game, so if that's any indication how tightly contested it was. Expect more of the same here in game two. And what do you think, Chad? Do you think either team will really change much about what they're doing here? No, I think Witzkin and Andrin just need to clean up a couple of things. Went for a couple of balls that weren't quite there. 
Antrim will start it off at 0-0-2, playing in his first U.S. Open. Says his other tournament that he really likes to, is the Nationals. Yeah, it landed in. It did land in. Oh. Side out as a result. Yeah, we got a little banter going between Whitskin and Weinbach. Zero, zero, one. And that one will be long. <laughs> Spelling saying I needed to hit him right there. He was going for right shoulder. Anjum is tall and slight. Man, no doubt. Mentioned he's from Stockholm, Sweden. He says his favorite food is, you guys want to guess? I wouldn't even begin Swedish to Swedish fish. Oh, you're, you're close. <laughs> Swedish meatballs. That was nowhere near close. Oh, it had he Swedish, Swedish in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I've just got candy on my brain right now. Well, I, I wonder why that is. <laughs> Somebody just stopped by and gave us some candy. Oh, you know, you said, Chad, sometimes it's tough to catch up to it off the tape, but wasn't tough for Witzkin that time. Now that one set up a little bit higher. Witzkin able to get on top of it. Andre and City first started to play pickleball on vacation in Baja, Mexico. Weinbach try to put a little bit on that shot and instead it finds the net. Yeah, and that was better ball movement from Andrin and Witzkin right there. One, one, one. Spreading both Sperling and Weinbach out wide. What? Wow, that one stayed in. Yeah. Both players continue to keep in the crowd engaged in this particular match. Weinbach hollering, no, 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 and then yes, yes, yes. And Andron gets tagged off that one. So moves it to 2-1-2. Two, one, two. And Witzkamp couldn't catch up to that one, so back over to Weinbach and Sperling at 1-2. Oh, great defense by Witzkamp. And a good decision by Andrin as he backs away and lets it go out of bounds. Yeah, again, Spelling trying to go for the body on Andrin. Well, he's got a big target, that's for sure. Yeah, but when he turns side on it, he's down the thickness <laughs> of my <laughs> forearm. <laughs> good point. I don't think he's eaten a lot of those <laughs> Swedish meatballs, <laughs> or Swedish fish for that matter. And a misfire there. Yeah, Anja needs to stay patient with that one. They had control of that point. They'd move Spelling and Weinbach around. That speed up just wasn't quite there. It got a little too close to the body. 
Deuces are wild here at 2-2-2 two, two, two in game two. Right out. And the side out will get it back over to Andre and Witzkin. Two, two, one. Wrong receiver. Wrong receiver. Ooh, Weinbach should have been back Point. receiving that one. So that's a mental error that is going to make three, it three, two. two. If you're not lined up appropriately, it's... Uh, Obviously going to cost you. Yeah, he's probably still thinking a little bit about that wrong receiver. Um, you know, needs to let that go and move on. You talked about the mental aspect of this game, especially when you get to this level. It's just as critical, if not more critical, as the physical capabilities and endurance and that you need to build to also play at this high level. Oh, oh, oh Sperling, great job catching up to that one. And then Weinbach unable to return that shot by Witzkin. And Witzkin and Andren now have rolled off three straight to open up this 5-2 lead. Witzkin. And Dave Weinbach's going to call a timeout on this. I think he feels like they're just a little bit out of sync here. Yeah, well, it's all started with the, the wrong returner. So four straight points and a timeout being taken here in Naples. We'll be back in just a moment. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's by Zing Zang. The number one Bloody Mary brand is on fire with new Zing Zang Blazing Bloody Mary by Deco Turf, the official pickleball court surface of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships by Franklin, the official bag of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And remember, you can purchase the official U.S. Open Pickleball Championships apparel at kitchpickleball.com. Well, Stefan Andren and his teammate Rick Witzkin feeling pretty good right now. Up 6-2, but down a game to Sperling and Weinbach. So trying to force this to a third game with a berth in the gold medal match on the line. Yeah, I think these guys just needed to regroup for a little bit, talk for a minute, realize that that wrong receiver is something that can happen, move on. You got a great game strategy for playing these two. Keep the hand battles going, be patient. See if the timeout stems the tide of momentum. And indeed it does. That'll move us to the second server. Yeah, Andrin trying to do too much with that drop. And quite continually swing through the bolt. Well, after the timeout, they get two straight stops. They get the side out. Yeah, and Rick Wicks in there was really looking and saying, you know, he be, needed to move over more into the center of the court because in Chad, where John Sperling is, Andren really needs to be covering that line, and Rick Wicks has got to move over. Oh, what a put away by Andre. <laughs> Not yeah. the right spot. Right no, there. it's like he really anticipated that. It's like he saw that uh, John was going to do a little, try to do a little flick uh, at him down the line toward his body. He just stepped over to his left and had an easy put away. And then Witzkin, a little uh, deceptiveness there along with the put away. Well, Witzkin throws his whole body into a lot of his swings. Yeah, that's a better drop there by Andrew and Weinbach trying to be fine with that one and take it cross court. Seven, two, one. 
Merling again able to catch up with one off the tape. Neither Andre nor Witzkin able to get up to the kitchen here. Oh. Yeah, and I, you know, you feel like Sperling maybe took a quick glance to see where they were, and it was just enough to make him miss fire. Okay, two, one. Oh, that's two misses. Yeah, Sperling again going big with that backswing. And you see, as soon as that arm straightens out, you're trying to swing through with the shoulder. His body collapsed on the first one that went in the net. That one he stayed up taller and it just came out flat. Finally put away by Sperling after Andren hit about five straight backhands. Good hand exchange there. The last one from Witzkin just popping up a little too high. It's so great to see these guys having such a great time, you know, playing uh, playing out here at, at this very high level. 9-2-2. Two, two. And make it 10-2-2, two, two. so we've got game point. Witzkin and Andrin one point away from evening up this match. Trying to be able to catch up to it, though. Oh! How good is that, Rick Witzkin? And to win the game on top of it. Yeah, perfect around the post coverage there from Witzkin. We see he recognizes that that ball is going to go out wide to spell, and you see him just take a half step back, block that one. I mean, the ATP with, I'm not sure if that one crossed over the net or not, It was, but it, 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 was, it was a winner nonetheless. And that was a whole lot of fun. 11-2 in favor of Witzkin and Andre in game two. And guess what? We got a game three for birth in the finals coming up after this timeout. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. It's all been good numbers here today in Naples, Florida. And the magic number is three right now as we are going to a third game between Sperling and Weinbach and Witzkin and Andre. And a side out to get this thing started. Well, I was just about to say the difference for Aldrin, Andrin and Witzkin in game. Number two there was that they were cleaner, didn't make a whole lot of mistakes. And then we got two in the net. Yeah, that game two was a lot quicker. Serve only changed sides seven times in game two versus 17 times in game one. And an early lead here for Weinbach and Sperling. The one seed trying to get into the finals.
And a misfire there by Sperling, so move it to 1 0 2. Yeah, Sperling just let that ball get a little too far behind him. Makes it more difficult to go wide cross court. Surf going back over to Andre and Witzkin. Andre getting everything right now. And then that is well deep. And the and the defense in these games have just been tremendous, Dave. One, one, one. High level, no doubt. Weinbach catches up to it. Been a number of unforced errors early in this third game for both sides. Great decision to let that one go wide. Yeah, good spot, good speed up there. Getting that one behind one, but. Oh. Unofficially, I'm going to say that's the fourth unforced error for Sperling. Or, uh, excuse me, for, for, Andrew, for Andrew, yeah. yeah. On, the, on the same ball, too. He's trying to add a little bit too much spin with that, that forehand dink. He's trying to hit, hit a, a firmer forehand roll, and he's just coming on the top of the ball and, and cutting it across. Beat up there by Witzkin, pays dividends. And yeah, Spelling turning around, taking a look to see if that ball was going to go out. He hit that one about waist high in the midcourt, so it may have been going out. Impressive defense here by Andrin. Uh oh. Uh, Weinbach finally puts it away. It was well set up off the lob there, though, by Sperling. Yeah, good spot there from Sperling. Witzkin and Andrin going for that one, so it ended up pinching them in the middle. And this is the, an unofficial timeout here. Well, they're looking for the ball. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're <laughs> it's somewhere, somewhere out in the stands. And I know that. Yeah, I know that the players can be funny about not changing <laughs> out a ball, but at, at this point, you know, it's too much of a delay. And you just pick up another one. Let's get this thing going. And having to do the typical wobble check the wobble, on the ball. Mm -hmm. The wobble, wobble check. Add yeah. some spin to it, either with the paddle or by flicking it up in the air. If it's out of round, it'll jump. It'll actually jump in the air when it's spinning. Mm -hmm. Franklin X40, the official ball of the... And now, and now they, did, they just did find the original ball. <laughs> So now they're going to take a look at which one do you guys prefer. Well, the, the other thing is, too, is if it's a brand new ball and it hasn't been scuffed up yet, then the ball slides more on the court. So you want a ball that's got a little bit more scuff on it so it, it bounces truer and, and stays truer to its flight. Chad, you're quite the ball expert. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Andrin couldn't catch up with that one and make it a 3-2 advantage for Sperling and Weinbach. Oh, now there's another ball gone. Now this one's underneath the bleachers. I've never seen this many issues with the, the balls in the <laughs> tournaments here. <laughs> Different kind of ball controversy here. One ball, two ball, three balls, four. So Dave Weinbach finally does get the ball, and now he serves the ball. Into the net. And he just missed that third shot drop with that ball. 2 3 1. Oh, nice job on the overhead there by Sperling. Move it to 2 3 2. That one was just up way too high, and he goes five full. Yeah, it's, that's a tough ball for Andrew to try to get all the way up to the kitchen line. Weinbach did a good job putting a little bit of pace on it down at his feet. Into the net. And we are tied at three. I feel like this one's going to go all the way right down to the end here. Yeah, it's feeling a lot like how game one uh, ended up after it got to 4-4 after that 4-0 lead. It's been tight ever since. 100 off the net, Weinbach catches up to it. All right, and then that beautiful nice. shot by Weinbach. He's going to get us a chest bump. Yeah, you'll see a good cross ball body there from Weinbach. He moves back into position quickly, anticipating that forehand again. So a good one two punch there. Weinbach's so skilled. He's got just such great control of the game. I mean, except for right there, we've done able to catch up to it, but that was a, that was a tough shot to get to. And I'll move it to 4-3-2. But I was going to say, you know, you, you look at Dave Weinbach. It, he's not imposing uh, aesthetically as an athlete. He's not the quickest. He's, you know, but he just does the fundam fundamentals so well, Chad. Yeah, and a lot of it has to do with his anticipation as well. He puts himself in, he puts himself in good positioning. Side out gets it back over to Andre and Witzkin here at 3-4. Well, that one's not coming back. And just sitting up a little too high. Andre throughout this one is whether it's a forehand dink or a forehand drop, he's really trying to lift the ball a little too much. He's not been, he hasn't been able to find that consistency. And again, on the forehand side. I'd like to see him get a little bit more extension rather than trying to lift up on it. He's just trying to add too much spin and it's not grabbing right now. Fire fight won by Weinbach and Sperling. Make it 5 3 1. 5 3 1. Make it 6 3. 
And this is the first time in a bit we've seen one side get a little bit of momentum. Yeah, and a side switch actually might come at a good time here for Andre and Witzkin because uh, they might have needed a timeout. So we'll get a quick break while they switch sides here in game three. The conclusion coming your way in just a moment from Naples. So U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville by Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast by Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro and by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Back here in Naples, Florida. Great look at the Zing Zang Championship Court. We're into US Open Pickleball Championships. They started in 2016 and have just gotten bigger and better every single year. Dave Benz, Melissa McCurley, and Chad Edwards with you on our coverage here today. And also, this has been a good semifinal match here. Yeah, Dave, also this is Zing Zang Wednesday here at the Mento U.S. Open Pickleball Championships right here on the Zing Zang Championship Court, a court that always feels like the Super Bowl of pickleball. You know, it's a, a very special atmosphere. We were not greeted with Zing Zang Bloody Marys, though, when we got here. We weren't. I blame that oh, yeah. on the truck. So 6-3 out of the timeout, or out of the side switch, I should say, and it's going to move it to 6-3-2. Andren can't get it across the tape, make it 7-3, four points away, Sperling and Weinbach from getting into the gold medal match. Winner of this one will take on the winner of Crandell, Derisi, and Merchant Gingrich, which is the other semifinal, and we'll have that one coming up for you after this one. Good patience and good speed up there from Sperling. Went right into the body of Witzkin. Moves it to 8-3. And then they're going to take a timeout here. This is a, a, a difficult one because they're going to have to really come up with something different. They've been doing more of the same. You know, being patient at this point, trying speed ups. Uh, that's just not uh, working in their favor currently. What do you think, Chad? Maybe yeah. more aggression? Um, you know, in the first half of, of this game, Anjan and Witzkin were trying to do a little too much. They were trying to force the issue. They were trying to speed balls up, but, you know, just just trying to do too much and missing it in the net or, or, or missing wide right there. Tried to stay patient, but didn't really do anything with the ball. It was just kind of giving that same ball back to Sperling. So I'd like to see you know, if, if Andrew and Sperling are going to get in that cross court, you know, go a little bit middle, pull him out wide. When Weinbach steps over, go behind him. Use use all parts of the court there and try to spread them out sideline to sideline. You know, patience just going in a cross court dink yeah. doesn't, doesn't really create anything. So I think they've just got to create a little bit more movement on the side of Weinbach and Sperling. By the way, how great is that wireless handheld camera? It takes you right out onto the court. You get a, ch a chance to, to kind of right, right be in that conversation. Yeah, super cool. The coverage and quality and angles and everything that the great crew does with cameras in the truck, just outstanding here at the U.S. Open. Timeout serves its purpose. So Witzkin and Andre get the serve back here, but in a big hole at 3-8. That ball is just wide. That would be one where my son would say, well, why did you hit it? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
Well, in that situation, it's it's Sperling is is, is staying in the point, and it, in reality, it's. It's Weinbach's call because he has the better view and he's not trying to focus on hitting that ball. Yeah, that, that is a great point, Chad. And did that tag him? No. So side out. Yeah, that's a great point. You're focused on hitting the ball. You're not necessarily focused on where, where yeah. it landed. Nice job of getting the serve back. And closing it here to 4-8. Can they close it a little more? I didn't quite get outside it. Tried for that ATP. So 8-4 now, three points away from a chance at gold. Quick hands by Witzkin. Yeah, good hands there by Witzkin. I mean, honestly, if I was if I was Sperling and Weinbach right now, I'd be going at the forehand of, of Andrew. We saw it break down in the first half of this game three. That one got about halfway up the net. Sperling just choked that one off. 4-8-1. <laughs> A little confusion there. Andre tried to get out of the way. Witzkin got there too late. Yeah, I think he kind of leaned in. He wasn't really sure, I believe, where Witzkin was. He was just a bit behind him. Wasn't in position to return that one. Well, they'll close it to 5-8. Yeah, and that's certainly something that can really help him at this point, Chad, getting some unforced errors. Or four stairs. Yeah, and I, I don't think that's that's not necessarily a ball that Weinbach needs to, to needs to speed up or try to force the issue of speeding a ton of balls up right now. <laughs> Andre couldn't get out of the way. Gets tagged. And he gave us an off shot. So I, you know, I, I think he knew he just that was coming back at him in a position he couldn't get out of. Yeah, he just got. Got stuck on the forehand side. Paddle was down, down below his waist. And another point here for Weinbach and Sperling, who are now two away. And by one. And that'll be deep. Moves it to 10-5. Yeah, and again, Anjan trying to force a little too much there. And a timeout will be taken by Andre and Witzkin. Down to their last gasp here against Weinbach and Sperling, the number one seed, one point away from getting her berth in the championship. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Total Pickleball, your one-stop pickleball shop. Free two-day shipping on the widest selection of pickleball products. By Franklin X40, the official ball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. By Gamma Pickleball, the official grip of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And by Yola, for the champion in you. And John Sperling certainly felt like this is where they were going to be on the precipice. Of the, <laughs> look at Dave, he's always playing in the camera. On the precipice of going for a gold, guaranteeing themselves no worse than a silver if they can get one more point, get this thing across the finish line. Hi, man. Oh. 
And Andren puts that one away. So that'll take us to match point number two. Ten by ten. And there it is. The match goes to Sperling and Weinbach, the number one seed in this division. They will play for the gold later on this evening here in Naples, Florida. Witzkin and Andre gave them all they could handle. Dave with something to say, but we don't have a mic out there, so that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Thank God, because I don't think he'd ever stop talking. <laughs> Take a look at the final point here, and uh, I guess it kind of ends in fitting fashion because Andren just had a lot of miss hits in that third game. Yeah, and it really, uh, you know, the, the errors in my mind is what was made the difference in this one. It was tight all the way. So, Sparling and Weinbach moving on. Witzkin and Andren will play for a chance to have a bronze medal at least, and uh, we're going to have the other semifinal in this division coming your way when we continue our coverage from Naples. Stay with us from the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Back here in Naples, Florida, we have one team that we know is going to play for the gold in the men's senior pro doubles, John Sperling and Dave Weinbach. Who will they play? Well, we're going to find out. Merchant and Gingrich taking on Crandall and Derisi to get this thing underway here in semifinal number two. And it uh, be interesting to see uh, how these teams come out. Dane, uh, Dane Gingrich out of Santa Barbara, California. Not a bad. If you're not in Naples, Santa Barbara is a pretty good place to be. <laughs> He's done pretty well here in Naples as well, guys. Yeah, he certainly has, you know, being a uh, senior champion pro in mixed doubles last year, as well as in doubles, uh, bronze medalist and split age. Uh, so he's quite accomplished. He's a, a great mentalist as well. Then you got Altoff Merchant out of Owensboro, Kentucky. This is Altoff uh, entering into the senior pro division for the first time. He just reached up age, so he actually has won every event that he's played in this year. Yeah, he was, uh, he was, he was chased off to what going into uh, going into his, his senior pro. But we've got uh, Scott Crandall, we saw before, has the ability to create some things, uses the lob effectively, but I think in this one, himself and his partner Jose Derisi, they need to stay controlled. They can't try to force the issue. Gingrich and Alt and and Merchant are going to counter counter attack those those speed ups, and they're going to create some uh, some opportunities for themselves as well. And I think we'll see Gingrich and Merchant uh, going out really fast and putting a lot of pressure on them very early. I don't think we're going to see uh, a really slow game from them, Chad. Uh, you know, I don't think they want to come out and be patient. I think they want to come out and really attack these guys straight on. Well, Merchant and Gingrich, they got here uh, in their sim or their uh, excuse me quarterfinal match. They beat. Kennedy and Osin's de Oliveira. Did I get that even that, close? That was pretty close. That's, that's Jamie Osin's de Oliveira. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, so Merchant and Gingrich on the road to here uh, to the semifinals, you know, certainly had to go in three to get that one. So not. Uh, not unscathed in oil, and and Jerisin Crandall, who we saw here earlier today, they had to go three as well. Well, we're 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 three games on all the matches that we've done so far. It just shows you how tight the competition is and the, and the level here. Yeah, and certainly as they get deeper into the draw, the competition certainly gets a lot tougher. 
We'll have Merchant and Gingrich, our number three seed, against Dereci and Crandall, the number two seed. And then the, the winner takes on the one seed. And we're about ready to get things underway here. And Jose Dereci did, did go through a... Uh, Wardrobe change since the last match. Scott Crandall, I think he also went through a wardrobe change, but he chose the same <laughs> same shirt. <laughs> same shirt and shorts. Just a, just just a, a, just a clean a, version. Just did fresh ones. You know, we talked about the mental aspect of this game. Uh, Dane helps a lot of people in pickleball uh, from the mental aspects of, of what it takes to be at the top. Well, it's not easy, especially mentally to play at the professional level. And the side out to get it started is Dereci and Crandall started with the serve and give it up quickly. And we got a couple of lefties going against each other here too. Altoff Merchant being a lefty, Scott Crandall being a lefty. And that'll be deep. Just out. Gingrich and Merchant. Asking the referee, she saw that one out as well. And then Merchant into the net. Yeah, just tried to put a little too much on that backhand dink right there, accelerated, but came in pretty flat. Teresi finally able to get up to the kitchen, and nice shot by Crandall. Yeah, and that's about the only spot that you're going to be able to speed up on, on Gingrich. If you try to go at the backhand side, he's got a good two-hand backhand counterattack, but you are able to get him up on that right shoulder, right shoulder to right, right hip. Merchant Crandall. Crandall going to that lob. Oh, nice pickup from Dereci. It really was. Long exchange going on here. And then finally won by Dereci. And a good speed up there on the Merchant forehand side as well. You'll see Merchant sitting on the backhand. Dereci goes left shoulder. Often the most difficult spot to pick up there is paddle side hip to armpit. The lefty's going back and forth and then Crandall tried an ATP and he misfires. Yeah, I don't think he had much, much of an option other than that one. But difficult shot in. And difficult for a lefty to get an <laughs> ATP on that gotta, side of the court. You gotta try to shape that one around. Right. Let's go out, and it ends up being the right decision. Yeah, and so far, Chad, it's like I was expecting Gingrich and Merchant to be coming out more on the tack and speeding up things a lot faster, but it's actually being Dereci and Crandall thus yeah, far. Yeah, they're, they're allowing Crandall and Dereci to set the pace of play right here, and they're picking their spots well. And into the net, so it's a, suddenly a 4 nothing advantage. And guys, I don't know when 
Gingrich and Merchant win their quarterfinal match ended, but I know that it, it was it, it, it's been a while. It's been a while, yep. and and Crandall and Derisi, you know, they were on this court not that long ago. They've had enough time to rest, but maybe have a little bit more mo momentum, not having sat as long. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's quite a possibility. There is. You know, it's a fine line between sitting and, and getting rest or, or sitting and, and losing uh, kind of the mindset and the, the rhythm of what you took in from the previous match. But at the same time, these are professional players as well, right? They're really yeah. kind of used to the pickleball environment, yeah. uh, the pickleball pace, I guess I could say, with long wait times and it, some time playing back to back. It usually only takes a few a few points to get back into it. Nice put away there by Derisi. Yeah, I didn't want to say that 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 senior pros and they stiffen up when they sit. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say they might have taken a nap. <laughs> well, I I would join them in that regard. Me too. Every day, 2 o'clock. Yep. Oh, I can't get past 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock is nap time. I'm very jealous of both of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good balls from Crandall. Continuing the pressure on the Merchant back end. Taking that ball out of the air and cutting down the reaction time. Crandall the lob. Merchant does get back up to the kitchen. And then Derisi puts it at his feet. Yeah, another good spot there from Crandall going cross court, cross, oh sorry, cross body on Merchant. This time he was sitting forehand, couldn't catch up to the backhand. One adjustment Crandall's gonna have to make is that he keeps lobbing to the Merchant forehand. He, he was going over Prodanov's backhand in the previous matchup. This time with the lefty, he has not made that adjustment yet. And they're gonna call a timeout here. You see the frustration on all top Merchant at this point. They're gonna have to find a way to re regroup or this one's gonna get away from them quickly. Yeah, that return long. So 6-1 with the stoppage here in Naples. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Good luck at Dane Gingrich right there. And Altoff Merchant in a hole here in game one. Yeah, and they're coming on the court still talking about what they might need to do here to get into this game number one. Yes, you are. You got yes. Trish Winrow, our referee for this match. Crandall Long. He had what he he had what he needed, just didn't get the wrist over the top of it to get it down. Six, one, two. And into the net, so the side out timeout does its job. And Gingrich will get the serve. Dan Gingrich, who is a mental performance coach. Done that for over 16 years, working with pro athletes, collegiate athletes, high school athletes, every major sport. So it talked about the situation of keeping them back in the last match. That one right there with Crandall, that's something where you gotta try to find the feet. He tried to keep Merchant back, but Merchant's moving up into that, so he ended up feeding it into his strike zone. And then we back that up with some miscommunication in the middle. Three, six, one. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, see, and it looks like they're, they're coming out and being more aggressive mm -hmm. with these guys got to coming out of that timeout. Yeah, good drive there from Gingrich. Three, six, two. And a good fifth from Merchant, but trying to run through on that one is tough. Unforced error there as Derisi puts it into the net, so. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, part of, part of uh, Merchant and, and Gingrich coming out aggressive is now Crandall and Derisi are trying to be a little bit finer, not leave a ball up or not give them anything that they can speed up. So that also creates those balls in the net because you're just trying to get it above the net cord. They will get the serve back off the misfire there by Merchant. Teresi hits it well long. Yeah, all over it, but again, too big of a backswing. We saw it in, his, in, in Crandall and Teresi's match earlier. We saw it for Weinbach and Gingrich match. As far as that big backswing, it's so hard to control the ball. Well, since that time out, when they opened up a 6-1 lead, the last four serves for Derisi and Crandall have not reaped any points. Four, six, one. I like the pressure from Merchant that they're just trying to do a little too much. So move to 4-6-2. Now Merchant jumped in front of that, thought he saw an opportunity and ends up hitting it wide. Yeah, and, and your great return, you know, Chad, a lot of people think about it. Well, how, what's the, how's the best way to return the ball? And anytime you can get deep into somebody's backhand. Yeah, deep, deep and low. The best. Yeah. Good attack there from Derisi. But with that deep, low return, the best that you can, you can do with that one is put some height on it, get it into the kitchen, and then you're back at the baseline anyway. So... It's really, uh, really difficult to do. Here's the difference in thinking between you guys, the, the players at this level, right? You're thinking about where is that, where is that shot going to go? Where's the best place to return it? I'm just thinking, can get I get it, it over, over the, the net? Another smart speed up from Scott Crandall, you know, and I, Dave, I, I call that, you know, you're just trying to get over the net. I, I call it playing with purpose, right? So thinking about what you need to do when you're returning a ball, when you're serving a ball, when you're making that transition, when you're getting, you're constantly thinking, trying to open up something for yourself. Yep. And we got another timeout. Yeah. Well, at 8-4, Merchant and Gingrich trying to stop the bleeding. We'll take a quick breather as well here from Naples. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Paddletech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takeya, hydration is an all-day game, and by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Save the date, April 13th to 20th, 2024. Welcome back to Naples, Florida, everybody. Dave Benz and Melissa McCurley, who is the tournament director here for the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And Chad Edwards, who was a fantastic pro. He happens to be related to another fantastic pro. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're glad to have you along. Is it hard for you to just watch Simone at this point? No, what she what what this has allowed me to do with all my commentary is that she has to listen to what I say. <laughs> she can't run away from it anymore. 
No, it, it, it's actually, um, we'd, we've started you know, working together more as, as far as developing some stuff in her game. Because I, you know, now, well, good adjustment from Derisi. Now I, I, I watch and analyze so much pickleball that I see the tendencies a little bit more than what she might see when she's playing or, or see some things that she needs to adjust. So. So you're saying it works out good. So that's that's all we that's all we want to know. <laughs> Derisi tries to catch up with that one, cannot, and the side out will get it back to Merchant and Gingrich, but they are in a giant hole here at four nine. Yeah, Derisi got caught on the forehand side, a little too deep. Try to bring that scorpion back in. Oh, and what a fantastic serve that was. That's uh, even got on paint, got a little skip. Jumped up on Derisi. Oh, misfire by Kingrich. He'd like that one back. Yeah, just a little tentative there from Gingrich. Kind of slowed the paddle down through his motion. Crandall speeds it up and it pays dividends. They'll get it back here at 9-5. Oh, landed in by about a foot. Gingrich getting out of the way of that one thing he was going to sail deep. But Derisi, good top spin there. And that brings up game point. Game point number one for Derisi and Crandall. Ten, five, one. Ooh. Uh, Crandall, Crandall mishit it a little bit. He, he was right there in his wheelhouse. Oh, he didn't miss hit it. He he got all of it. That was the issue on that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he wanted a miss hit on that one. He wanted he wanted some edge guard from that one. Got a little little excited. Yeah. Well, they still have a second crack at it here. Game point number two. And there it is. So one game to none here in this best two out of three as Crandall and Derisi need one more game to get to a championship match here in the men's senior pro doubles division. One more look at the final point of this game. Yeah, and Crandall reading this ball exceptionally well going crossbody on Gingrich. So difficult to catch up to that one. And with that, we'll step aside game number two coming your way after this quick timeout. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Here we go, game number two. Crandall and Derisi taking that first game 11-5, and they will start game two here. Looking at Merchant and Gingrich with the serve.
Yeah. And see, I can't tell you how many times we've seen Scott Crandall hit Dan Gingrich at this point. And I so I, I've actually been watching Gingrich, and I've been watching his eyes as he's doing it. He's When Merchant goes cross-court, he's actually looking at Derisi. And then when he sees the ball go, he then switches to Crandall. And I've been, I was watching it the whole first game, and I, I think Crandall is picking up on that and going crossbody with it. And that's the kind of awareness it takes to be successful at this level, recognizing an area you can exploit to Reese into the net. Yeah, I just don't think if Gingrich and Merchant don't find a way to get on the attack first. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, Sometimes it's more bet it's it's more advantageous to attack the aggressive player first and get than allow them to dictate. Well, I know at this point I'd be done being hit. Into the net, so the side out. And Darisi and Crandall have a little discussion. I think Darisi thought Crandall was going to be uh, a little more aggressive on that. Oh, Crandall tried to switch it up, was going to go to Gingrich, and instead puts it into the net. Nice Ernie executed there by Derisi. Yeah, perfect move there by Derisi, but set up extremely well by Crandall. Putting the pressure on Merch, and the only option he had was to go down the line there. 1-1-2. So 1-1-2. One, one, And the speed up there, and Crandall puts it into the net. Yeah, it's better set up, and a good trigger pull there from Gingrich. It's the first time Merchant and Gingrich have had a lead in this match. That one right down the boulevard. Yeah, and, and that, they did a great job, Jerisi and Crandall there, uh, pushing some things out wide to create some more openings uh, throughout the middle of the court. Yeah, Merchant's got a, Merchant has to try to come back on that one. Gingrich took a step to the line. Off the tape. Yeah, but I like to see that. That was, you know, he didn't get into that dink that he's been getting into. He just kind of came right out and tried to make something happen. Yep. Merchant out of Owensboro, Kentucky. He's like the mayor in that town. Literally or figuratively? <laughs> figuratively. They, they, they love that guy. The mayor actually comes to visit him at his home. Well, the, that's pretty impressive. And he doesn't have any pressure of having to run for office, apparently. So that's <laughs> even better. <laughs> yeah, the town loves him. It's a great town. And uh, they really rally around him like a hometown hero. Let's that one go. And it's a good decision. 
And a 3-1 advantage. They try to get a little bit of breathing room here. Uh, that's going to be deep. Kingrich talking to himself. Good spot there from Gingrich. Played Just backhand oh. perfectly. Played it great. Yeah, sometimes it's a tell with certain players as far as they only go to the two-hander when they're speeding up. Gingrich has a tendency to do that sometimes, but he has developed that two-hand backhand roll cross-court. Yeah, and that'll get them fired up. I mean, that was real well seen. That's what it helped get because they haven't really been changing it up, Chad. Yeah. They've been very predictable to this point. And, and twice in this match so far, in this particular game, we've seen both Gingrich and Merchant do a great job with the changeup. And that'll take a timeout for Crandall and Derisi. We'll take a quick break as well. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. So Merchant and Gingrich off to a pretty good start here in game two as trying to see if they can get this to a third game for a berth in the gold medal match. Where Sperling and Weinbach await. Yeah, and I think they just kind of keep at this, Dave and, and Chad, being unpredictable, trying to be the first, uh, first team on the attack. So here we go at 5 1 2. And into the net to make it 6 1 2. So that's a good speed up there from Crandall. And again, switching to, we, we saw Gingrich and uh, Merchant take a little bit of initiation or initiating that speed up. Crandall tried to do the same thing there, but just got a little too big on that second attack. Crandall speeds that one up and forces the side out. One six one. One six. They need to get something going here if they want to avoid a third game. And that's not going to do it. Move to the second server. And they will get a point off that shot, so 2-6-2. Two, two. And an unforced error there by Derisi. So Gingrich and Merchant now in the driver's seat here at 6-2 and a chance to add to the lead.
<laughs> How about that reaction out of Gingrich? Had to throw a bunch at Crandall and Teresi before he finally cracks through. Yeah, good aggression there from Gingrich. Again, we saw the speed up as soon as that second hand went on the back on the backhand. He sped it up, but he changed direction to the last speed up. Now Derisi playing a little tentative. We saw that from Gingrich and Merchant. Gingrich and Merchant, all the momentum right now. They've scored a point on six of their last eight serves. And another timeout being taken here by Derisi and Crandall as they are in a big 8-2 hole. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Total Pickleball, your one-stop pickleball shop. Free two-day shipping on the widest selection of pickleball products. By Franklin X40, the official ball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. By Gamma Pickleball, the official grip of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And by Yola, for the champion in you. Afternoon is seeding its way to evening here in Naples, Florida. 517 local time. And all the momentum right now has shifted from Derisi and Crandall to Gingrich and Merchant. A commanding 8-2 lead here in game two. And that's going to be wide. How about the reaction out of Teresi? <laughs> Teresi giving the full stare down. Eyes bulging. Good counterattack there. Eight, two, two. And put away by Teresi. So the serve going back over to Crandall and Teresi. And listen, guys, I, I, I don't have a vested rooting interest in I, either sides, but I will make the observation that Teresi and Weinbach on the court together would be very good theater. Uh, it, it's, it's, um, it's entertaining, for sure. Crandall, the lob, Merchant, the finish. Yeah, and there's one of those lobs, Chad, that you talked about where he's lobbing onto the forehand of, of Merchant. Yeah, it's it's tough to go through the middle here because you're going double forehand. And that serve is deep, so back over to King Rich and Merchant at 8-2. Randall couldn't catch up to that, make it 9-2. Good change of direction there from Gingrich. It's a little one-hand flick. Teresi couldn't catch up with that one. And we are a point away from getting to a third game. Game one was 11-5 in favor of Teresi and Crandall.
into the net. And how about a third game to decide the final spot for gold? 11-2 in favor of Merchant and Gingrich. Uh, I, I, I was really a little bit caught off guard. I thought this game would be com much more competitive in game two. They came out and were the aggressors from the get-go. Yeah, and that's what we expected to see going into game two. They had to change something up because the patience and the slow game just wasn't working for them. Another look at the final point from game two. And Crandall ultimately just puts it into the net right there. So game three coming up after this timeout. Stay with us from Naples, Florida. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Back here in beautiful Naples, Florida, Jose DeRisi and Scott Crandall, they were impressive in game one, and it was Gingrich and Merchant who were the aggressors in game two. Who's gonna take game three for a berth in the finals? Crandall gets it started at 0, zero 2 And a quick side out. And I think Dane Gingrich owed Crandall a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, Crandall had had enough uh, shots on Gingrich up until that point. And Gingrich right back at you. And what do you think, Chad? I mean, because they're obviously going to continue to be aggressive. What do you think, uh, Crandall and Crandall and Derisi just need to do the same thing? It's 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 going to come down to who's who's able to to control the pace, who's able to get the first acceleration in. Crandall hits wow. it deep, and, and, and Merchant saying it wasn't Merchant, even close. Merchant saying that's a foot out. I don't, I don't think that was a foot out. Well, Crandall asking the ref <laughs> if, if he, he, he saw enough to return, and no. And Merchant is uh, getting the crowd into it, saying, "Hey, hold right, it out, take out, a look out. at it." Ooh. Well, that's not, oh, to me, that's, that's on the line. That's not a foot out. <laughs> that looked like, uh, that's a great camera <laughs> shot, by the way. I could see why Crandall was so upset. That one was a put out. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and Merchant was just sending a message there. He's a yeah, I think uh, Merchant with the stand down here, what he's trying to do is get Derisi and Crandall to uh, take a little, a, a couple of uncalculated risks and, and try to go hard at him, and Merchant's just going to get out of the way. How about the reaction out of Merchant after he gets a friendly bounce off the net? Derisi couldn't catch up to it. Yeah, and he, he's uh, really getting fired up here. I, I think he's trying I'm, to send it. He's I'm upset about a, them questioning that call. Yeah, right? and I, I'm not a fan of walking toward the net or doing stuff toward your opponent. So I'm okay. I'm okay with you know getting fired up and and yelling and stuff like that. But but actually taking steps toward your opponents, it, it, we've seen too much of that lately. Four nothing in an early timeout here in game one or game three. One of those. Pickleball championships powered by Margaritaville are brought to you by Paddle Tech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takeya, hydration is an all-day game, and by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Save the date, April 13th to 20th, 2024.
as Jose Derisi didn't really like the reaction out of Altoff Merchant prior to that timeout. Merchant fired up and his team with a 4 nothing advantage. Merchant trying to paint the line, but that one is out. <laughs> oh, they, did it catch the line? They're saying yeah. it caught the line. Yeah, I thought was, it was wide. I was in. Wow. Crandall, Crandall called it out originally, but he, he over, overturned his original call. Five straight points Five for Gring, Gingrich and Merchant. <laughs> Way out, he says. Uh, yeah, and the, these these guys, you think they want to win? Another look. Yeah, that one is way out. Yeah, that, that one did make the foot mark. That was the first serve without a point for Gingrich and Merchant in this third game. And then just like that, it's 6 nothing. And they're going to have to switch sides here. This is in game three. Switching on six. On forced error by Derisi, and that'll take us to the side switch. We'll step aside for a quick moment from Naples, Florida. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro and by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Six, nothing, Merchant and Gingrich in absolute control on the side switch and Derisi and Crandall are out of, well, the, 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 I, I stand corrected. They still have one timeout remaining. They get the benefit of the stoppage from the side switch, but feels like they need everything to go their way right now in this big hole. <laughs> still way out. She's still going at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but part of that is the middle aspect, right? Trying yeah. to get into the head of your opponents. Oh, yeah. It's only the second serve of this game for Derisi and Crandall. Yeah, so good. Well, <laughs> I will say this, that they're not out of it right now by any means. You go down 6-0, you're at the end change. You know, we've, we've seen teams rattle off 11 straight. I think they, they've got to stay within themselves right here, not, not get into the mental games too much, but Allow Merchant and Gingrich to try to speed up wrong balls. Because that, that's, that's not a ball to speed up there from Merchant. He just fed it straight into Dreesey's strike zone. And that's going to be long. Well, I will say I like the animated nature because there's no question what they're calling right now. They're, they're, they're yelling it very, uh, very clearly. Gingrich reaches up and hits it into Derisi. Yeah, so we'll see the, the spot here from 
Crandall. He was getting Gingrich when he was going onto the right hip or onto that forehand side. That one, he goes too much to the backhand side. Gingrich is able to read it, counter it. And Merchant, all he needs is a little small sliver of light to, to really get fired up. And it's 8-2. Figure one more and we might see Crandall and Derisi use that final timeout. Eight, two, one. Timeout receiver. Oh, oh, not <laughs> you missed the bend. Yeah, they, they said, you know, let's just take it now. <laughs> and Merchant still fired up playing to the crowd. We will catch our breath here in Naples. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. By Zing Zang. The number one Bloody Mary brand is on fire with new Zing Zang Blazing Bloody Mary. By Deco Turf, the official pickleball court surface of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. By Franklin the official bag of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And remember, you can purchase the official U.S. Open Pickleball Championships apparel at kitchpickleball.com. Well, you know, I mentioned Dane Gingrich is a mental performance coach. And guys, if you remember that first game, it was 6-1 when Gingrich and Merchant called that timeout. And now, Derisi and Crandall did go on to win game one, but since they called that timeout and kind of got their, their head straight, it's 23-9 in favor of Gingrich and Merchant. And right as I say that, they put it into the net. <laughs> uh. You're not supposed to compliment people, Dave. <laughs> Commentator's curse. <laughs> <laughs> and you just doubled down on it, my friend. Yeah, Gingrich just coming out a little flat on both of those. You saw the paddlehead never got underneath the ball. It's coming through the back of it. Well, that ball's going out. Well, it ends well anyway for Crandall and Teresi. Yeah, and that's what Crandall this time went to that right hip. Gingrich can't slide across with the backhand, gets jammed up on the forehand side. That's long. So move it to 382. But I think that's what Crandall continues to have to do, right? He's going to giving himself a chance to make a lot more of those than he will missing them. Yep. Three, eight, two. And great hands by Gingrich there. So the serve back over to Gingrich and Merchant with this 8-3 advantage. Crandall, the speed up pays dividends. Yeah, good speed up, good ball to speed up into the chest there from Crandall. And again, Gingrich not quite getting underneath that ball, coming in flat. Gingrich and Merchant scored eight points in their first 10 serves, but now four straight without a point. Wasted opportunity there. Maybe my eyes are bad, but I didn't think that ball was out. Yeah, they're certainly close <laughs> balls. <laughs> that 
Too quick of a side out there for Crandall and Derisi. Gingrich. Yeah, and that was a well-constructed point there, Chad. Yeah, it was like Gingrich was setting himself up for that overhead with the shot that preceded it. Yeah. So two points away from playing for gold. Make it one point away. Yeah, Gingrich is so tough to beat on that backhand side. Short and quick. Good compact swing with the two hand up. Match point number one. He's <laughs> <laughs> <Reese is chopping laughs> right now. <laughs> Ten three two match point number two. Uh, Darcy tried to do too much on that one, and that's it. Eleven three. Merchant and Gingrich moving on, and you see Dane Gingrich, the big smile on his face, he and Altoff Merchant nail. Well, they'll have a chance to play for gold. Another look at match point. Mm. Yeah, Teresi and Crandall, they, they started off game one so impressive, and then after that, it was all Gingrich and Merchants. We're stepping aside. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We have both the gold and bronze medal matches still to come here from Naples, Florida. Wasted away. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Naples, Florida. Thanks for sticking with us during that break. It was a break for everybody, the, the players, the, the broadcasters, the crew. Uh, we all ran off and uh, got a little bit of sustenance and a little bit of beverage, and now we're ready to go. We got to get some, some medals to give away. We're going to start with the, the gold medal match, and it's going to be Dane Gingrich, who 
was fantastic in that last semifinal that we just had out of Santa Barbara. And he's teamed with all top merchants and uh, should be a whole lot of fun. Uh, Dane, Dane really found a groove, I thought, in that in that match midway through after his team. And we talked about it. His team was down 6-1 in game one. They called the timeout, and then they, they dominated from then on. Yeah, they were just being too conservative. So they did turn around, got more aggressive, and it worked out for them. And there's his teammate, Altoff Merchant. And Merchant right now warming up on the same side of the net as Dave Weinbach. And uh, I bring that up only because Dave Weinbach and Altoff Merchant are very good friends. And I talked to Dave briefly just a couple moments ago, and he said that he can't even count the number of uh, tournaments that he and Altoff have played together in. He said probably 60-something tournaments. And uh, so it should be interesting to see them going head-to-head -head here. Very good friends at Dave Weinbach. Uh, you know, what can you say about him? We talked about him during his semifinal match. Uh, one of the ambassadors of the sport for a very long time. Has been very skilled and very uh, high, highly decorated uh, uh, ever since he arrived on the scene. And his teammate, uh, John Sperling, was fantastic in that semifinal as well. Yeah, and you know, Dave Weinbach partnered with Dave, Dane Gingrich last year in this event, and then they took the gold medal. And John Sperling, uh, I, what impressed me, Chad, was his ability. It was it was almost in that semifinal game. He had that one off the tape, and he didn't miss it. And you said, oh, those are tough to get to. And then he didn't miss another and one. Then the made, yeah, then he made the adjustment. And I think that's what... That's what it comes down to with pickleball is how quickly you can make an adjustment, whether it's a ball off of a net, whether it's a, it's, it's speed ups, whether it's, it's counter attacks. So one thing's for sure in this one, both, both teams having to go three in the semifinals, they're, they're going to look out and will look to come out and you know, establish the pace that they want to play at. And I think for, for Sperling and Weinbach, they're going to be a little bit more on that on the counter attack side. They do have to clean up some things from their semi semifinal. They missed a few balls in the net, got a little too big on some swings. But even though you know it wasn't as clean as what we typically see from them, uh, they still played pretty pretty good pickleball. And then obviously for Merchant and, and Gingrich, very slow start in game one. But if they come out like they did in game three, where they went up 6-0 and then just never looked back from there. It's going to be a, a, a tough battle for, for Weinbach and Sperling. So Weinbach and Sperling start off with the serve here at 0, zero 2 No conspicuous wardrobe change for Merchant and Gingrich. And I say conspicuous because there is a wardrobe change to, to talk about as it uh, pertains to all tough Merchant. And the side out will get the serve over to Merchant. Merchant started that third game, by the way, by reeling off five straight points uh, when he began the game with the serve. See if he can do the same here. And he starts it off with a point right there. And all tough Merchant, it, it, the shorts that he's wearing right now, it, it, on the back side of his right leg, about midway down, just below the pocket, there is a very sizable tear in those shorts. And he came over after they won the semifinal game and said he was going to go change into those shorts. He's been holding onto those shorts t since 2018 when he here at the US Open had a chance to be able to win a championship and faltered. And he said to himself, I'm gonna hold onto those shorts until I get a chance to rectify that. And he's wearing the exact same pair of shorts right now. And and you know, hopefully the, the he's able to turn around the fortune in that pair of shorts. Well, hopefully so. He must not be superstitious because I'm not sure I could have worn mine. I was going to say, I know a lot of athletes that would have burned those shorts. Right. <laughs> Zero one one here early on. Yeah, and, and Chad, I think we're going to see probably a very slow game on this one because Gingrich and Merchant aren't going to want to speed up a ball unless they just get the right ball on Sperling and Weinbach. Their hands are just too fast. Yeah, it's calculated risks, and we saw a good speed up there from Sperling. Cut down his swing a little bit, went right into the body of Merchant. Uh, 
Merchant trying for an Ernie. And look at the reaction out of Dave Weinbach. He's like, kind of looking at him like, what are you thinking? You know me better than that. Yeah, he started to chirp a little bit. Sperling reeled him back in, said yeah. stick with us. And Sparling unforced into the net there. And that does seem to be something that Sperling's a little bit susceptible to, Chad, if yeah. he stays into the rally too long. Especially on the on the forehand side, he's much better or well, much stronger on the on the backhand cross court dink than well, on the forehand. The thing I noticed there too was I felt like he he should have probably moved his feet, right? He just tried to reach to get that ball. And that's going to be out. Kingrich trying to paint it into that corner, just misses. Yeah, that was a good spot from Gingrich, but just overcooked it a little bit. Missed by a couple of inches, if that. Trying to go crossbody on Sperling. Catch him leaning on that backhand side. Sperling, 52 years old with the serve. Grew up in Trenton, Michigan. Now calls the villages his home. And King Rich into the net, and suddenly it's a 4-1 advantage for Sperling and Weinbach. And Dave, you talked about that break that we took. It, it's also an intermission for all the spectators that are here to run out and grab a bite, bring something back in. All kinds of places to eat around here at the 60-court facility at the U.S. Open. Well thought out. That one might have been going out. Sperling hit it, and we play on. And Weinbach puts it into the net. Yeah, I would have seen to. I would have liked to see Weinbach just slide to the right a little bit, get into the backhand confrontation. He started going to the left. And you saw him get jammed up on the hip twice, and then wasn't able to hit that pancake. And that's long, so make it two four. Well, Weinbach lays off of it. It goes out of bounds. So good decision by Dave. Move it to 2-4-2. Two, 2-4-2. Four, two. Yes. Two, four, two. Right back at you. Yeah, so a couple of speed ups there on either side. One from Gingrich, one from Sperling. We see not a whole lot of shape to them. They're just coming out a little too flat. They're sailing a little deep. They get underneath it just a fraction more, brush up the back of the ball. That one can't get over the tape. And we're tied at 4-4 here in game one. Okay, yeah. 4-4-2. Oh, Merchant tags Sperling and they go in front. All tough Merchant, by the way. I, I gave the players uh, some some questions to answer and uh, all tough merchant the reason why I found out about the friendship between he and Dave Weinbach is because he listed Dave Weinbach as his all-time favorite pro athlete oh. <laughs> so, so I had to go ask Dave his reaction to that and Dave said oh yeah we're good friends he's kidding <laughs> Dave did not pay him back though Dave Dave listed his all-time favorite uh, athlete as a tie between Roger Federer and Michael Jordan I figured he would have said himself oh merchant right there saying, hey, why didn't you put me as an athlete? I got some game. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not sure there's two guys on the court more that their own biggest fans. Oh, how about the misdirection and misguidance there? I mean, he, he fooled everybody. Yeah, he's really good with that on his uh, backhand side. He just great, one of the best roles I've seen. So when they got the serve, Gingrich and Merchant were trailing 1-4. Now they're winning 8-1. They've scored seven points, or six points in seven serve attempts. And the timeout being taken here by Sperling and Weinbach will uh, take a quick breather as well. We continue from Naples in just a moment. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro and by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Rich in this best two games out of three for gold here in Naples, Florida. Let's see if that timeout can force the side out and get the serve back. Oh, oh, King of City, step on the yeah. line, he did. And referee Byron Fresso. Yeah, referee Byron Fresso was all over that call. And he, he, he saw, it, saw it so early, I think he surprised him it really came back there. Yeah, right, right foot. Right heel, I should say. All top merchant rolled off six straight points before that ended with that foot fault. Spurling was going for body. And King Rich got out of the way. And one thing, Chad, if you if you don't get the Ernie, I mean you're you likely cause a distraction. Yes. Well especially in that situation there, Gingrich probably would have ended up on the other side of the net. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Your paddle. Yeah, his paddle hit the, hit the line. Your paddle, you heard it. It, it made a loud noise. <laughs> uh, so the side out gets it back over to Gingrich and Merchant. Move it to eight four two. Eight four two. Oh, nice thought. Didn't execute it properly. Yeah, Merchant just tried to slide that one down the down the line past Weinbach, but very difficult to do. And take a look at it here. He tried to, tries to cut across it, but as you cut across, it gives that shape away from you. Wow. Oh, Weinbach wins that exchange. <laughs> and then with a word for his friend. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he was the teacher of that type of uh, reaction. We've seen the same from Altoff. Oh, Gingrich goes up and gets that one, slams it home.
a little too much metal there from Sperling. Not enough height on that one either. That is well <laughs> off. <laughs> and Weinbach with plenty to say about it. <laughs> so Sperling continues the serve here. John Sperling lists his go-to karaoke song as 99 Problems. Did not see that one coming. I might need to hear him perform that. Wow. Now that was a great a great exchange as well. I mean, all of these players can really, you know, engage in a hand battle with the best of them. Yeah, and all the counterattacks right here, with the exception of the speed up from Gingrich, we're all on that backhand side. Short, compact, not big swings. A little bit short, so the side out back to Merchant and Gingrich. Yeah, but that was an outstanding return from Merchant. He it was deep return to Sperling's backhand. Sides looking for an opportunity here, but being very patient. Well, who's going to make the first move? It's Weinbach, and then Merchant was ready for it and answers. He's still trying to give him the stare down, but he's not going to look back at him, is he? He's not going to nope. get into that mind game. Nope. Nope. Like Dave and John there were talking about, do we want to use that timeout? And they say, no, let's play on. They have one timeout remaining. Move it to 9-7-2. and Sperling going back and forth. Weinbach speeds it up and puts it down the boulevard for the winner. Yeah, good patience there between Sperling and Merchant, but ultimately Merchant just popping up on one with the body, which kept it elevated. Weinbach stepped in, split the middle. Well, unable to close any ground on the first serve. And also unable to close ground on the second serve. So back over to Merchant and Gingrich. 9-7-1. Ooh, and Weinbach 
Hits it long, and that takes us to game point. Yeah, that's part of a little bit of the mind games there, where you start getting somebody's head, and then you try to do more than what's needed. Well, Weinbach and Merchant, they, I mean, uh, Weinbach and Sprinkling, they do have a timeout. They didn't use it there. And they force the first stop. Can they force the second and get the side out? Indeed, they can. Yeah, that was a better job by Sperling. He didn't try to hit it through Merchant. Just got that ball down and a little bit to the point where Merchant was overextended. Weinbach puts it away. Yeah, good set up there by, by uh, Sperling on the speed up. Caught Gingrich trying to come back to the middle. Takes us to 8-10. Make it 9-10. Yeah, I think Weinbach got away with one right there. Gingrich just overextended. Didn't have anything else to swing through with other than the shoulder, and that's what caused that paddle to drag. Well, we'll move it to the second server. Huge pivotal point of this game. Weinbach and Sperling trying to force extra pickleball. Gingrich and Merchant trying to get the serve back to try and close out this game. Fantastic reaction in just a block. Yeah, it took a little bit of pace off of it. Didn't try to get in the hands confrontation. So we indeed do have extra pickleball here at 10-10. Yeah, and that, that, that forehand, you know. Yeah, there's a, there's a breakdown there with He's trying to use too much wrist or too much hand as far as you see the paddle coming through and then it opens up to try to get some lift and almost like the paddle just rolls in his hand when he goes through. A footfall called here. And that's going to move us to 10-10-2. 10 10 2 Gingrich puts it away. That'll take us to game point number three. The backhand into the forehand. And there it is. Game 
And Merchant just wanted to stick with that. He knew if he had the patience and he kept going after John, that there was a John Spurgeon, there was a good chance of an un unforced error. Yeah, the forehand is just breaking down for Sperling right now. That's where all his errors are, are coming from. So it would not surprise me if Gingrich and Merchant come out and go at that forehand here in game two. And you'll just see it in this last cross court thing. Catches that a little late. Flattens out, not able to get it up and over. Merchant and Gingrich, one game away from gold here in Naples. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Back here in Naples, Florida. Beautiful April evening here in Southwest Florida. I mean, it, the humidity, well, what little there was this afternoon is pretty much all but gone. Temperatures are absolutely perfect. Not a ton of wind. I mean, this is, you couldn't ask for a better, a better afternoon and now evening for pickleball here at the Minto US Open Pickleball Championships. Sperling unable to get that over the net. And it'll be interesting, Chad, to see what Weinbach and Sperling do here to leave Sperling out of that vulnerable position on the forehand side that he's been struggling with. Forehand looked pretty good right there. <laughs> yeah, good good reach in there from Spurling and good direction back behind Merchant. It wouldn't surprise me if they didn't stack right here just to keep Spurling on the left rather than have him, rather than playing straight up and he ends up uh, on the right there going in that forehand cross court ding. Right into Weinbach. That one's going to leave a bruise. Zero, one, two. Gingrich the speed up and then Merchant putting it away. Yeah, Gingrich is doing an excellent job of pulling the trigger on those balls that are just high enough. And he's going hard at Weinbach right into the right side of the body. And that one right down the middle is a winner. So stays at one zero two. That's long. Yeah, too big of a backswing there from Spurling. I know what he was trying to do there. He was trying to just slide the misdirect into the body of Gingrich as he was moving out of the way, but too big of a backswing. Wow. Great exchange, and finally Gingrich couldn't catch up with that one. 
He gave himself a good slap on the butt. Yeah, I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Cambridge puts that one away. Yeah, and that's a great job of just keeping him moving, getting him out of position, creating that opportunity. You know, if I'm Weinbach and Sperling, Chad, I'm switching this up a little bit. I'm, I'm not staying on the sides that they're on now. No. Oh, great job by Weinbach to catch up with that off the tape. Yeah, a little unlucky there that the ball popped up. Don't know if Weinbach was going to catch up to it if it didn't hit off the net court. Weinbach puts it right into the net. Yeah, those cross-court forehand dinks from Sperling really aren't putting any pressure on Merchant. Merchant's taking a full step back from the kitchen. I think they've got to, got to take some calculated risks here and speed a few more balls up. A lot of speed there, and finally Merchant hits it long. Much and a little frustrated with himself that he wasn't able to get on top of that one. But again, we go harder and harder, bigger and bigger. That ball is going to sail long eventually. This is the 12th serve of this game, and there's only been three points. So tuck yourself in. This one might. This one might be a little bit. A little bit of confusion there. Well, that's Weinbach's ball all day long. Spelling has to stay home and cover the line on that one. And that's the sixth or seventh time we've seen Gingrich speed that ball up through the middle off of that backhand side. You know, it's kind of been a combination that's been very successful for them, right? With Merchant going cross court to Spurling, being patient, being patient, being patient, until Gingrich gets an opportunity to do something with it that's put them in the office and position and created points. Yeah, the uh, the balls coming from both Weinbach and Spalling are, are kind of what we call dead dinks. They're they're not they're not putting any pressure on. They're not not forcing a whole lot of movement. It's just it's sitting there and it's giving Merchant and Gingrich time to to set up and and to think about the shot that they're going to hit. Yeah, I agree with you, Chad. It's like they're not really, uh, you know, they're just kind of being conservative with them, right? They're not yep. really putting any pace on them to try to force anything other than they just don't want to make an error. Weinbach to speed up and hit wide by Merchant. And we're suddenly tied here in game two. Sperling continues to serve. Says in addition to pickleball, he enjoys golf and hiking, anything sports related. But his passion is pickleball. He Teaches pickleball, owns and operates a camp and clinic in the villages.
incredible amount of patience here by both sides. <laughs> Wine back with the let's go. Uh, I'm making sure he's definitely heard. <laughs> Three straight points rolled off here by Sperling and Weinbach to surge in front. Yeah, Weinbach hesitated on that one. It was there. Just that little bit of hesitation caused him to catch that ball late, and it dropped a little too much. 4-3-2. So 4-3-2 now. Oh. Kingrich gets out of the way, and it ends up being the wrong decision. That one wasn't really even close to going out. I don't know what fooled him on that. Uh, he he got jammed up. He was on a little too far on that forehand side, so he wasn't going to be able to get the paddle back or, uh, to be able to get on the ball anyway. So I kind of just moved his body out of the way, hoping it was going to go out. And that swings and misses. Yeah, Gingrich in that case was trying to cover his line, and uh, Merchant was just too out far out wide. Great shot by Sperling. So Merchant and Gingrich are going to use a timeout as Sperling and Weinbach have rolled off five straight points to take this 6-3 lead in game two. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Total Pickleball, your one-stop pickleball shop. Free two-day shipping on the widest selection of pickleball products by Franklin X40, the official ball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. By Gamma Pickleball, the official grip of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And by Yola, for the champion in you. Back here in Southwest Florida, Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville. And having a whole lot of fun hanging out with Melissa McCurley and Chad Edwards. Yeah, it's great to hang out with you guys. And, you know, it's been, what, four years? And it's uh, just like just like we've never let any time go by. So uh, it's pretty awesome. Jump, jump back in once a year. Yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> that's what it is. We see each other all the time, but this is like the one time a year that we're in the booth together. Yeah. And the last few times I've seen you, Melissa, we've been like, kind of, we've seen each other. We've been at some of, them as some of the same events, but haven't gotten to spend a lot of time together. So it's great to be on a broadcast with you again. Yeah, enjoy it very much. All tough, able to catch up with it. And then, oh, wow, going back. Words out of position and hits a winner. No, he got, well, I guess he got he caught on a footfall. Oh, didn't establish, oh, yeah, didn't yeah. establish both feet outside of the kitchen after he went in to get that ball off the net. So we see one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the did. right call, but it's a shame because yeah. it was a heck of a shot. Left foot was on the kitchen line when he tried to establish. Makes it 7 3 2. That's wide. All right, so here we go. King Rich and Merchant now in a hole at 3 7. And that into the net. Merchant, guys, he grabbed his back after that one play when he hit that shot with the foot fault. And seems like maybe he's walking a little bit. A little bit funky right now. See if that comes into play here. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Merchant, great job getting back up to the line, but better job of defending by Sperling. Yeah. yeah. No, go you ahead, Melissa. No, you, go, you go ahead. I mean, I was just saying, once he committed, he was really committed and then left the court wide open. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was going to say. You, If you commit that hard, you've got to win the point. Otherwise, you're done. It's it's almost like that, that shake and bake, the big-time poach. You know, you're coming in hot, and you can't expect your partner to get over there at the same time. At that point, is like Gingrich just became a spectator. Oh, that's going to be wide and long, excuse me. So that's that's one thing. Sperling goes for a, a lot of a lot of body. You know, and you see him each time that he's, you know, that's pr I think the fourth ball that he's missed long there, and he talks about going into the chest. If, if you rely on body, it's it's tough. You know, it, it's, it's a good shot into the body, but if that's what you're relying on, and you're, you're going to consistently miss that ball long. The ATP does not find the in section of the court. Another look at it here. So 3-7-1, Gingrich getting the serve back. And Merchant gets tagged, just serves his hands up in the air. Not much you could do about that. Wasn't returnable, couldn't get out of the way. So move to 372. 372. Ay, ay, ay. That one, that one's reaching over the net right there for the fist bump. But the ball that that won it was just a little blocked by Sperling because it changed pace and it got below the net. So that forehand had more on it. That Merchant was not expecting the pace that that Sperling put on that ball, and actually jumped into the body where everything before that had kind of just been sitting there. And that's going to move it to 8-3, and Merchant and Gingrich are going to use their final timeout. We'll pause momentarily from Naples. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Fantastic evening here in Naples, Florida. East Naples Community Park. Used to be a skateboard park back in the day before the community got smart and said, you know, we, we don't have enough pickleball courts. Let's, uh, let's expand the pickleball courts. And then next thing you know, Jim Ludwig and Terry Graham and Chris Yvonne came in and started the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And now, what are we, 
eight years later since they conceived of the championships idea and uh, we've got you know two pro pickleball leagues we've got major league pickleball you've got you know big name celebrities and, and athletes and billionaires involved in the sport and it all started right here it sure did and it's mind-boggling at us open redefined pro pickleball a lot of athletes that are playing now got their start right here Gingrich with a winner. And, you know, Dave, not only did this park transform uh, the community, but it, it really it just transformed pickleball. No question. I don't think it's a stretch to say that the sport is not where it is today in terms of people being aware of it in terms of the money that's in the sport at the top end of the sport. I, I don't think it's where it is today without the existence of this tournament. No doubt. Move it to 9-3 here, two points away from forcing a third game. You are good. You are good now. Merchant, a little frustrated, thought that Maybe that might have caught the line. Wow. That's just a fantastic shot by Merchant. There's really nothing they could have done on that. All they can do is really applaud him. Can they do anything with the serve, though, here at 3-9? 3-9-1. Last five serves by Merchant, Merchant and Gingrich have not yielded a point. They finally end that drought. to 4-9-2. Yeah, I like that Spurling's taken a step back away from the kitchen line just to give himself a little bit more time, a little bit more freedom. And he's putting some more acceleration and, and a little bit getting that ball to, to be a little bit more penetrating. Up there at the kitchen, putting some pressure on Merchant. Is there a way to exploit that when he's a step back like that? I mean, it, it, the one thing with stepping back there, it kind of opens up, opens up his feet to be attacked. But if he's keeping the ball down, there's, there's, it's a difficult thing to do to be able to attack down at the feet. Nine, four, one. And that one won't get over the net, so we'll go to nine, four, two. Yeah, the only thing that really does is. It, of being a step back is it takes away your ability to, to take more balls out of the air and speed up from. It's not a good not a, a good uh, position to, to speed up from too often. Unless it's a bouncing ball and you can put a good swing on it. I was gonna say, or unless it's too high, but odds are if it's that high, it's probably going out of bounds, so you don't mm -hmm. want to hit it anyway. That one's going to be long. So still breathing here in game two are Gingrich and Merchant. They'll get it back at 4-9. And they're doing a good job putting more pace on the ball. I think that's something that they have to continue to do if they're going to get back into this game. <laughs> Man, my fuck is just, uh, he is entertaining.
Great decision to let that go. And you talk about Weinbach being entertaining. You know, this tournament means so much to him. You know, he has four men's doubles titles, two in men's pro and two in senior men's pro. I know he'd like to see another one here tonight. Gingrich and Merchant have not scored consecutive points in this game. Chance to do that here. Yeah, and I was just going to say, the longer they're staying in those long rallies, it seems to favor Gingrich and Merchant. Yeah, they saw, and they were moving the ball around a little bit better than Sperling and Weinbach were, and we saw in that last one. Weinbach, I think, actually brushed his leg with his paddle that, that ended up slowing it down and catching it late. Weinbach speeds it up, it hits the net, and it goes out. And how about this? A little run now for Merchant and Gingrich. They've got it back to a two-point margin. Make it. And make it a one-point margin. And they're going to call it a timeout. There seems to be a little mental fatigue going on right now, Chad. Yeah, they're just letting, letting those balls get a little too deep. And we've seen better ball movement from Merchant and Gingrich in the last few points than what we saw from them earlier on in here in game two. Well, we'll take a quick timeout from Naples. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Paddletech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takeya, hydration is an all-day game, and by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Save the date, April 13th to 20th, 2024. Well, it was at one point 9-3 in favor of Sperling and Weinbach. It is now 9-8. So you got to tip your cap here to Merchant and Gingrich battling back. And now they suddenly have shifted the pressure back over to Sperling and Weinbach, who are already down a game and facing the possibility of this thing being tied up if they give up another point out of this timeout. And indeed, it is tied. Yikes. Yeah, and they're just continuing to put the pressure. And I know you can feel the tension coming from the Sperling and Weinbach side as that momentum completely shift. And they came back six points. Oh, Merchant couldn't get that one. Well placed shot. And great awareness by Sperling to see that Merchant was still on his way in. Yeah, I mean, once Merchant tried to rush up there that quickly, I knew he was in a bad, bad spot. Because every time we've seen him try to move that fast and the ball gets to his feet, there's no way for him to pick it up. Gingrich speeds it up, and it ends up being a good decision. 
Yeah, Weinbach a little unlucky there, missing that one wide. Looked like he had Merchant beat down the line. But quite wide, not even... Uh, off the net, Gingrich catches up to it. And back over to Merchant and Gingrich. Two points away from winning gold. Again, Merchant rushing up to the kitchen line and gets caught with his feet still moving. Yo. In all honesty, it's more important to move up there under control than it is to get up there as fast as you can. Oh, great defense by Weinbach. You know, Weinbach and Sperling both able to get back up to the kitchen. Decision by Merchant, and that's going to take us to championship point. Yeah, I really like how he made sure he didn't go into any predictable pattern then. It kept them completely off balance. Haltoff Merchant trying to rectify the holy shorts here. And it's going to have to wait. So 9-10. Crowd certainly enjoying what they're seeing this evening. Well, the crowd wants another game three. Always. <laughs> <laughs> they want pickleball for as long as they can get. hit well long and we are tied at 10 and we're going to go to extra pickleball. A little too big there from Gingrich but the key to that point there was the reset from Sperling in the middle of it to be able to get himself and Weinbuck back into that point. First game went extra pickleball 12-10. This one now doing the same tied at 10. Execution by Gingrich. <laughs> Off the net and out of bounds, and the serve's going to go back over to Gingrich and Merchant. And Weinbach's just, just so frustrated with the net situation. He had a, a couple of those hit the net and fly out. Since they had a 9-3 lead, Sperling and Weinbach have scored one point on their last seven serves. Incorrect oh, receiver. Again, Spurling, Spurling wow. re received. It should have been Weinbach. Same thing happened when the last time that they messed up the receiver. And now we're on championship point number two.
pal. Yeah, but, you know, I hate that he, you know, missed that in that guard, but I like what he's doing. He's really trying to keep the pressure on with his dink on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Championship point number three. Merchant comes in, and he's the merchant of death as he delivers the knockout punch. Yeah, and you can see how much this means to all players. I mean, they really left everything that they had out on that court. <laughs> and I don't know what he's going to do with those shorts now, but... Uh, the, Frame them. Yeah, the, 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 sh <laughs> the shorts have, have been... They've been cleansed. He and Gingrich celebrating this victory, and it was hard fought. They win it in consecutive games, 12-10. 12-10 over the number one seed of Dave Wanbach and John Sperling. Making Dane Gingrich two-time now, two-time in a row, 22 and 23, men's senior pro champion. And congratulations to the duo. Merchant trying to soak it all in, or I guess pour it all out. Yeah. King Rich over there with a smile, and Merchant is uh, letting the emotion guide him right now. He is fired up. Let's take a look one more time at championship point. Yeah, a little unlucky there with the ball dribbling over the net, but well played by Altoff Merchant and Dane Gingrich. And we will hear from the victors. After this timeout, our coverage continues here from Naples, Florida. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Naples, Florida. Look at some of the stats from that championship match. Uh, the men's pro senior doubles and uh, well uh, I guess Dave Wanbach and John Sperling they came into this match. I know they wanted to win gold. They're going home with silver and, and I know silver's frustrating guys because it means you lost your last match but leaving, leaving Naples with a silver not too shabby. You know John and I were just talking what a spectacular day it was. You know we had so much fun on the court today. John and I are really close friends and He's such a competitor, love playing with this guy. And as you know, Dave, I've been, I'm, been fortunate enough to play in this court many times in gold medal matches with wonderful partners. And today was no different. So just a great time. A special thank you to Chris, Terry, and Jim Ludwig for making this tournament happen. Dave, you know it's one of my absolute favorite events of the year. The electricity, the energy of this crowd is unbelievable. Hey, John, you guys had a 9-3 lead in game two. What happened? Uh, let's not bring that up. Uh, why do we have to go there? Uh, Dave asked me the same question. He goes, what was our lead at, at that? And I'm like, I don't want to remember. Um, listen, uh, those two competitors, you can't give them even the slightest window. They're so good. And we made a few mistakes, and they capitalized, and, and they, they played phenomenal. So... What can you say? Well, let's get Curtis Smith, the CEO of Paddletech. Paddletech is the official paddle of the U.S. Open to present you guys with your silver medals. Uh, well earned, no question, uh, for them to get here and be able to take home their silver medals here in Naples, Florida. All right. And now time for you guys to uh, go celebrate, and we're going to bring in the people who won the gold. All right, let me get one picture from him. He's going to get one picture. There you go. All right. Thank, thank All right, thank you guys. All right, let's bring Mr. Merchant and Mr. Gingrich in here, and let's hear it for the champions here in your men's senior pro doubles. Wow. Uh, 
D Dane, let's start talking uh, first uh, for you. I mean, uh, to be able to win this championship and be able to come back from that 3-9 deficit in game two, what does that mean? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm speechless. Like, w playing with Altop has been amazing. Played with Dave. Like, those guys are so tough. Like John said, you cannot give them an inch. The match can be over like that. So I kind of don't even know what just happened other than Altop grinded his face off, and Dave and I watched, and they got in a hands battle and just prayed. Yeah, well, and it was fun to watch uh, the, 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 you know, the game within the game with you and Dave. I know you guys are close friends, and you guys were chirping at each other the entire time. But uh, tell the folks at home, we talked about it on the broadcast, but tell the folks some of the story about the shorts. <laughs> so uh, in my first U.S. Open Finals <clears throat> in 2018, I wore these shorts, and I lost. And we're doing a big remodel in a house, and we're getting rid of all this stuff. And I saw these shorts, and I go, there's no way, there is no way I'm throwing these till I win US Open gold. <laughs> and I told you before the match, I'm going to get these shorts to wear it for this match. And that's it. Hey, I got to tell you, my dad's in ICU in India. I get out of here. I fly home right after the US Open. And my mom sent me a text message the other day, and she said, when you play the Badger, he knows everything you do because he taught you what to do. He knows everything. So be unpredictable, and it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Sitting in the hospital watching the U.S. Open is a dream come true. Uh, we saw the emotion at the end. Congratulations. Best of luck to your father and it's safe travels. I do have one more question for you, Dane. Um, I thought a turning point for you guys, going back to your semifinal match, you guys were down 6-1, and you called that timeout. And then from then on, you didn't win that first game, but it, you, you battled back in that first game, and then you dominated games two and three. I thought you guys just kind of carried the momentum. What did you guys say during that timeout? Uh, to be more aggressive, right? Like, Altoff is going to grind and grind, and I got caught kind of stuck watching and playing too passively. So it was for me, it was to play way more aggressively and try to impose my length as much as I could and, and just hope that it worked out. And it did with this guy next to me, dude. And freaking Dave over there just grinding his freaking face off too. This is, this is incredible. It's well, incredible. Well, congratulations to both you guys. Let's get Curtis in here with, the, uh, with Paddle Tech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships to present the gold medals. And uh, also going to have... I also got the presentation, uh, not only with the medal, but the, the sketchers. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm kind of jumping the gun. You guys get your sketchers gear. It's first gold, baby. <laughs> the sketchers sneakers, which are fantastic. And finally, most important of all, uh, you, you get a little bit of prize money for winning here. So congratulations, you guys. And, uh, and Do I not get like two hotel nights with this guy? I mean, come on. <laughs> For Margarita Will, I mean, everybody else gets a hotel room. How come we don't get one? <laughs> for, do, well, you get two nights free at Margarita Will for winning. That's pretty awesome. And you also get the prize money, you get the gold, and uh, you get a chance to get some uh, championship pictures here. And we're going to we're gonna let the photo session ensue. We're going to take a timeout. Don't go anywhere. Our coverage from Naples, Florida will continue after this timeout. Wasted. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at latitudemargaritaville.com. 
back here in Naples, Florida. And what a gold medal match we saw. And now we've got one more medal to hand out, the bronze medal match. And a number of spectators have still stuck around for this final match in this men's senior pro doubles division. And, you know, I mentioned it during the interview. It's, um, you know, I, I think when you look back probably 10, 15 years from now, you'd probably rather have a silver in your in your medal collection than a bronze. But you win the bronze, at least you won your last match of the tournament. Well, that's true, yeah. It's, uh, I guess how you per perceive it, right? You won something, you get silver, you lost something, but you still got a silver medal at the U.S. Open. <laughs> See, uh, in our household, silver medals don't don't go anywhere. Uh, nowhere, huh? No. <laughs> All right, I, I can imagine. Unless they're maybe kinda, it, they're kind of given away on on the walk out of. <laughs> yeah, unless maybe it's the first one ever. You know, if yeah, it's yeah, got yeah, some, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. my yes. first tournament, yes. I want a medal in. I got a silver. Yeah, yeah. That, then that's a little bit different. Yeah. What is Simone had to get rid of like two? No, no, it was, no. That was me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because they, 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 they can't compete with anything else in the house anyway. Okay, serious question. Where does Simone keep the medals? Where are the, where, where are, not just the silvers, but the golds especially. Where, where are they? They're, are they on display? They're in a drawer. They're in a drawer. The medals are in a drawer. The trophies are in a cabinet. Okay. So at one point they were, they were on shelves um, in the indoor court. Eventually it'll all, all go up there. But, you know, it's hard to find shelving that will, will, uh, support enough <laughs> enough weight enough Stand weight one. so well it's you know I, I i don't know if he's changed or not but i know that uh you know as of a year ago ben johns was just hanging all of his on a doorknob and that yeah. there's multiple doorknobs yeah, at this yeah, point I, I, no i mean if you open up drawers there's just drawers of, of metals <laughs> in the in the house and we are underway. Yeah, so we should probably talk a little bit about uh, what the, what's going on in this match. Huh? We got Crandall and uh, Derisi are in the near court, and you got Andrin and Witskin in the far court. And uh, one zero two start here for Andrin and Witskin as Andrin continues with the serve. Best two out of three to take home a bronze medal. And Andrin, now they get Witzkin involved. Witzkin speeds it up and Crandall off the handle. Yeah, I ran into Witzkin uh, on the way, you know, in between the match and coming over here because if nothing else, you know, we could be prepared to be entertained. <laughs> and this is an interesting matchup, uh, Chad. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, interesting matchup in the sense that you've got two what feels like conservative players on each side in Derisi and Andron, and two aggressive players in Can Crandall, Crandall and, and, and Witzkin. Witzkin. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what strategy they deploy. I'm kind of watching for that. I mean, honestly, if I, if I was Crandall and Derisi, I would probably go off to the, the forehand side of, of Andron. We saw it kind of break down a little bit in the previous matches when we were on the call. Um, and then for, for Andron and Witzkin, it would be... Uh, you know, going behind Derisi whenever you whenever you get the chance. That's going to be long, so move to zero two two. Zero two two. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's a good move by Derisi and Crandall. I think that's something that they had success with throughout the day. I'd like to see more of it here. But they've got to choose their spots. They've got to, they've got to hit that quality drive and, and allow Crandall to come up and really crash hard. Teresi unable to catch up with it. So side out, we'll get it to 2 1 1.
I don't know if it's just me, but whenever I'm or on pickleball and it's early in matches and it's like two one two three one two, I always think of area codes. I don't know what area code two one one is though. I don't know, but I'm sure we could find out. I always know uh, when I get to this at nine one one, I'm like, you know, it makes me want to make a call. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That is the time to make the nine one one call right. for help. <laughs> but now here we're at two one two, so of course it's New York. Two one two. Okay. Do you not know your area codes that well? I have absolutely no, no idea. Oh, really? All okay. right, well, see. Well, I'm not... I'm not My I'm mind not works in weird I'm ways. I'm not American. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> okay, well, so if we get a point here, which now it's 3-1-2, so now we've moved to Chicago. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. And now I'll know some, but not that, more in the southern, southeastern, you know, and even <laughs> the western side of the country. But uh, now I'm just going to be thinking about area codes. Yeah, I... 412, I, I want to say maybe Milwaukee. No, I think that's 414. I don't know what 412 is. But we're at 412 now. Yeah, Darisi needs to get the paddle head underneath that one. 412. Is it just a little tentative on the on the Crandall and Darisi side right now? That's too much as well. Yep. And a timeout being taken here at 5-1-2. We'll step aside back to Naples in a moment. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville by Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's Paradise Coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Dave Benz, Melissa McCurley, and Chad Edwards along with you. 15 U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. Minto has been the title sponsor from day one. Margaritaville has been powering it from day one. So many other sponsors have come on board and just great to see the growth of this tournament. And this venue is just absolutely fantastic. And into the net to make it 6-1-2. All right, that was, a, that was a really good setup there from DeRisi. Picked the right spot, went at the right hip, hip of Witzkin, but just caught that second attack too late. And an unforced error there. So finally, they will get a side out and get the serve back here at 1-6. One, 1-6-1. Six. One, six, one. Oh, yeah, that's always a tough break. <laughs> Kathy Dimitri is in the vicinity. And Witzkin quick hands. So they get the serve back up 6-1 here. Uh oh, that was. Uh, <laughs> I don't think what he intended. <laughs> <laughs> kind of got away from it. Yeah, a little bit of frustration. <laughs> yeah, but just a little right bit. Yeah. Move to six one two. Well, Teresi and Crandall still hanging on here in game one. Need to capitalize. Do not. 
So move to second server. Yeah, Crandall just getting caught a little flat-footed there. Not really giving himself enough space in that ball. Getting a little close to the body, just floats on him. Teresi speeds it up and then goes five hole on Andrian who uh, applauds the effort. Yeah, and I think that's that's the approach. That's the approach for Derisi and Crandall is to go at the forehand of Andrian. You know, he tried to speed the ball up right there, but Derisi could counterattack. Derisi cross court for Witskin. And then Derisi tries to speed it up and it's just long. Yeah, they had the opportunity that. Or more than just long. That was long <laughs> by a ways. Yeah, it's about a foot and a half. Uh, Derisi had the opportunity there again from a pop up off of the forehand of, of Andrew. I think he hit an out ball. Right? Yeah, he, yeah, he definitely hit an out ball. It was definitely going out. It's so tough when you're engaged that way and the ball's coming down through the middle. He speeds up, and eventually Whiskin can't catch up to it. A better one-two combo there from Derisi. See him attack and be prepared immediately for that bigger forehand. Little musical interruption in the middle of that. They're gonna, they're gonna restart the point. Yeah. Yeah, something I guess they're getting ready. Burn, burn, baby, burn. Baby burn. burn yeah. Disco Inferno, come on, here we go. <laughs> pickleball Inferno right now. This is uh, this is actually not a Pickleball Inferno. We've seen one point out of the last nine serves. Let's see if somebody can get some kind of momentum, string some points together. Good step over there from Crandall. Witzkin never really gave him a look, trying to go back to Derisi. So ready for that lob. It's hard to lob over a 6'6 guy. Yeah, and I don't know what the standing reach is, but the arms are almost as long as the torso. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're good. 
So 3-6-2. Three, six, two. It's going to be long. Back over to And Andron and Witzkin. Yeah, those last two misses from Crandall, he's caught just standing up a little too much. Well. Derisi and Crandall are going to use a timeout here. 7-3 in game one. Let's get a quick word from our fantastic sponsors. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Total Pickleball, your one-stop pickleball shop. Free two-day shipping on the widest selection of pickleball products by Franklin X40, the official ball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. By Gamma Pickleball, the official grip of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And by Yola, for the champion in you. Andren and Witzkin with the 7-3 advantage. That last point by them run uh, ended a drought of five straight serves without a point. See if they can string a couple together now. They scored six points on their first eight serves of this game. I told you earlier in our broadcast day, Stefan Andrens from Stockholm, Sweden originally, now lives in Portland, Oregon. CEO and business owner of Crown Lab. And he applauds the effort there by Derisi. Nice move by Derisi that. Jump in the corner of the kitchen, taking that ball. Nice and early. Well, that's going to make it 8-3. Yeah. And the serve goes back over to the other side. 3-8. Did Witzkin just change hands on that? Yeah. He throws out the left-handed forehand occasionally. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw him earlier with the left, and I was kind of questioning myself. I thought he was ready, but yeah, he's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He does it a lot on a on an overhead as well. He'll go up and hit a left-handed overhead. Of course, I don't know if anybody does it better than Riley Newman, chain, trading hands. Riley not here this week, but I'm sure our viewers are familiar with. What a fantastic player he is. Four eight two. Four eight two. Here to make it six eight or a five eight two, excuse me. And that'll be long. Point. Suddenly we got a two-point game. Six, 
And that one long out of Crandall. So serve goes back over to Andrew and Witzkin at 8-6. Yeah, it was good coverage by Crandall there. The ball floated on him just a little bit, but tried to go a little too big, maybe going back into the body of Andrew. And oh. And that was started by Witzkin speeding it up. 9-6. Nine, 9-6-1. Nine, six, I'm actually a little surprised there that one, Witzkin didn't follow faster or Andrin didn't crash after his own drive because it was a shorter return and it was a good drive. Yeah. Andrin, that was uh, their undoing in their semifinal match. It was in that third game, he, he had a hard time getting it up over the net on shots exactly like that one. And then a whole lot of want to out of Derisi right there. Seven nine. Seven nine one. Point. Suddenly 8-9. At one point it was 8-3. Yeah, expected a timeout to be, com to, uh, to be coming. They definitely started to take Andrin as, the, as their main target right now. Well, let's remind everybody who our terrific sponsors are this week in Naples. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. By Zing Zang. The number one Bloody Mary brand is on fire with new Zing Zang Blazing Bloody Mary. By Deco Turf, the official pickleball court surface of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. By Franklin, the official bag of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And remember, you can purchase the official U.S. Open Pickleball Championships apparel at kitchpickleball.com. Back here in Naples, Florida, this men's senior doubles bronze medal match. Crandall and Derisi trying to draw even, forcing Andrin and Witzkin to use the timeout. So I got a serious question for both of you that's kind of a fun question, but I'm serious about asking it. <laughs> At what point and your association with this sport, did the name of the sport no longer sound funny to you? Because when I came here in 2016, I got to admit, I was like, pickleball? Like, come on. Like, you know, but I mean, now it's just, it's pickleball. I would probably say 2018 is when it, like once, when we first moved down here, the same thing too, it'd have a pickleball shirt on, people like, you know, what's pickleball? And then you have to explain it. By 2018, people were like, oh yeah, I just started playing pickleball, or I just tried playing pickleball. And I think for, for me, anyway, that's that's kind of like when just the general population kind of was like accepting of the word pickleball. And I, I remember when I came down here, somebody said, you know, well, what, what, what is tennis? Like, I mean, you know, when, when the sport was first invented, like, people, like tennis, okay, it's just a name, it's just a word. So. Is it, when, when did it when did it change for you? Never. I mean, I you just always, always really like, yeah. I okay. was introduced to pickleball in 2007, and it just was the name for me. So it was always strange to me that anyone else thought it was strange. 
<laughs> well, it is. Uh, I don't think it's strange to anybody anymore, and it's. Um, just continues to grow and grow. And I'll tell you what, Scott Crandall and Jose Derisi, they're they're pretty pumped right now because they have fought their way back from a five-point deficit to draw even here at nine. Who's going to speed it up first? Both sides are pretty content right now to just stay in this stink game. Yeah. Oh, and an ATP. And you know, it's funny, you could almost see that you could see the lights in that brought well, as I mentioned the lights, the lights kinda of flickered here. You could you could see the, the lights kinda of come on in the middle of that point for Andrew and he was like, uh, oh I can hit an ATB. <laughs> yeah, Crandall didn't even move on that one. I'm not sure if he didn't think that the ball was gonna go out wide enough. But Andrew, excellent job waiting on, on that and letting it develop. And Witzkin tries to turn on some power, but a little bit long. And that'll move us to 10-9 in game point. 10-9-2. Yeah. Oh, he had it. And he set it up perfectly. Yeah, he saw that Ernie and he just didn't execute it. <laughs> I think that, that's that's the tough one though, right? You're you're coming over and you're locked in when you straighten the arm. The only thing it's gonna do is it's gonna go down. You almost need to come on the side of it so you can hit through it, not down on it. Move to 9 10 2. How about the reaction there? They'll get the serve back. This will be game point number two coming up. You know, and these guys have had a, a, a long day today, right, Dave? They started at 8 o'clock this morning. This is their sixth match. After we saw both teams on center court, they had to go and play some back draw matches that were really tough as well. And there it is. Game one goes to Crandall and Derisi, 11-9. And they were in an 8-3 hole, and they came back to win this game. That's pretty impressive resiliency out of them. And one more look at the final point of the game. Yeah, Witzkin didn't fool Derisi at all on that one. Tried to speed it up through him, but Derisi with two good counterattacks. And we'll step aside. Game two coming your way in just a moment. Margaritaville, it's not just a state of mind. Now, it's a place to live. Life, 
Introducing Latitude Margaritaville. New homes in 55 and better communities where you can live the Margaritaville lifestyle every day. Find your new home at LatitudeMargaritaville.com. Game one in favor of Crandall and Reese. And will we have a game three for bronze or will Crandall and Derisi ride that momentum in which they battled back from an 8-3 deficit into game two? Little wardrobe change here for Rick Witzkin. And Crandall will start off to serve here, 0-2-2. Unforced error to force the side out to start. Zero, zero, one. I think that's an attackable ball from Witzkin, but there's just too much body movement. By the time he sure, moves sure. the body and swings through that, the ball's already well below the net. Andrew and Witzkin finally get up to the kitchen. game as that goes wide. Well, that's good awareness right there by asking the ref <laughs> about the alignment and then he got bad information and then it was cute. No, you got it right the first time, sorry. <laughs> Referee Byron Fresso. ATP for the winner for Derisi. Yeah, and that one wasn't defendable at all. I think that might have been a half inch off the ground. It's about as good as you could play it. Zero, one, one. And then Crandall into the net. Yeah, Crandall just caught a little off balance there. Zero, one, two. Not quite a solid base to be able to flick that one up and over. Point. And they'll get their first point. I haven't tracked the unforced errors by Andrin, but there have been a lot of them. Witzkin gets it back for his side. Side out will move it to 1-1-1. One, one, one. <laughs> well, we've certainly got our share of ATPs in this in this game. You need, and he disguised that pretty well. It looked like he might just kind of dink it right back over, and he just went out wide and hit the ATP. They, I don't think that, that, that was the shot he was going to go for. Yeah, added a little bit of shape to it, curled it back in around the post. The lob, 
does just land in. Andren, great job to catch up to it, but uh, put it in a spot where it was easy for DeRisi to finish it off. So he's saying that it's a, an out ball back here the way he ran the lob down. Referee Byron Fresco saying. Really? Well, neither, neither player called it, so instead they asked Byron if he saw it. And Byron saying that he did and that they thought it was out. I, th I, yeah. thought, it, I thought it was in. He was just asking me a question. What did I see? Okay, okay. I thought you were getting See if the guys in the truck have a yeah. shot of that. Yeah, I thought that's what was happening as well. Okay, there we go. So that makes it 3 1. There you go. 2-1. Shouldn't it be 3-1? 2-1-2. 2-1-2. Two. Two, one, two. Two, one, two. No. Uh, I feel like that should be 3-1-1, one, one, but okay. No, because, <laughs> because <laughs> the, the, ball, the ball was still called in. Because the oh, they, oh, so they kept the, it in. Okay. The players did not make any call, so okay. without them making a call, the ball's in. Okay, all right. There you go. Thanks for clarifying that, Chad, because <laughs> I was certainly kind of lost there. But now it's 3-1-2 with that, that sprayed ball deep. So side out to make it 1-3-1. One, one. I think you're seeing a, a little bit of fatigue set in on both teams right here. We're getting some, some well, balls that are spraying by uh, a foot rather than a couple of inches. That one was a couple of feet. <laughs> oh, oh, Randall. <laughs> Look he at the just, reaction. He just can't believe it. <laughs> I, had a, I don't think he could have been set up, set up any better than that one. Excellent drive by Derisi. Perfect pop up there. And Crandall just dumped it straight into the net. Got a little too excited, perhaps. That one is out. Three, two, one. And the speed up by Derisi. Yeah, great spot to choose with some pace down the middle to the backhand of Witzkin. Decision by Andrew to let that one go out. And that'll take us to 4 2 2. Teresi backhand Ernie. Little little bit of a miss hit there too. Used <laughs> use the edge guard for that one. Yeah. Two, four, one. So two four one, which is not a zip code, but was the address of my house, my childhood home. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in case anybody cares. Yeah. A lot of memorable moments I think you have. <laughs> Yes. Oh, excellent reset there by Crandall. Three, 
three, four, two. And suddenly, not in at four apiece. Four, four, two. Oh, great shot there by Andrin. Another, I'm, I'm surprised at the number of mental errors we've seen. Well, they're, we're doing, they're doing a lot of stacking. Four, four, so, you know, you throw in some fatigue, you throw in a little, little bit of, of mental fatigue as well, and the stack. And they're not doing a standard stack. They're, they're going in and out of stacking constantly. Definitely makes it tough, no question. And then when you do ask the official, it gives you bad information. <laughs> oh, wow. Dorisi turning it on. So back over to Crandall and Dorisi at 4-4. Four, four. Four, four, one. Crandall can't believe he missed that one into the net, but tried to run through that drop, four, get up four, to two. the kitchen as fast as he could. Never really had a solid base to push through on with that one. Speeds it up off the tape, then he catches up to it. Oh, really smart there from Derisi. Witskin and Andrin thought that Derisi was going to misdirect and attack either through the middle or down the line. He just took a little bit of pace off of it, went back behind Witskin. That does catch in. Yeah, a couple of inches inside the baseline there. Andron into the net to move it to 4 5 2. Four, five, two. Oh, unfortunate for Witzkin as it hit the net and put it right into the wheelhouse there for Crandall. And so now the serve back over to Crandall and Dorisi up 5-4.
Crandall speeds it up. Andron into the net in 6-4. Yeah, not the, not the best spot for Andron to speed up there on Crandall. One going cross court to it, but two going straight into Crandall's backhand after he just hit that backhand cross court, already sitting on that side. Unforced there. You know that Teresi would like to have that one back. And there's that same spot you guys were talking about that is very vulnerable for Anjan. Yeah, it's, it's broken down on, on both sides with that one, with the backhand and forehand. It's, it's predominantly when that ball gets back behind him, he still tries to go cross court with it. So he ends up cutting himself off with his stroke. Randall, you see the frustration, he knows he wasted one there. So Andron and Witzkin still hanging on here. Down a game and down 4-7. Played shot by Witzkin. Kind of thought earlier that Crandall might have had an opportunity at ATP there, guys. And I, th I thought maybe he clinched at Witzkin and then thought he might not have been able to execute it. Yeah, I think I think what stopped him there was the fact that it was on his backhand side. Didn't quite feel as comfortable bringing that back around or shaping it. Consecutive points here by Andrew and Witzkin to get it to 6-7-1. Time out being taken by Derisi and Crandall will step aside from Naples. Wow. U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville by Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball, experience performance comfort on the court with the all new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Dave Benz, Chad Edwards, and Melissa McCurley, along with you from Naples, Florida. This bronze medal match has tightened up 6 7. Antron and Witzkin still on the first server. Chance to draw even. That'll move it to 672. Lob by Crandall. Keeps Andron on that baseline. Crandall and Teresi doing everything they could to end that exchange, but Witzkin and Andron keep it going. What a point. I don't know 
how Witzkin got one of those balls back. It was at his face. Yeah, and that certainly got some of the crowd here on their feet. It's great to see the crowd staying here late tonight and cheering these guys on. Knots it up at seven. Seven, seven, two. Seven, seven, two. Which, which can engine still continue to be confused on what side they are and who's serving? Well, in fairness, that was a long rally. And how about this? They've gone back in front now. They had a stretch where they scored just one point on seven serves, and now they've turned it around. They've scored four points on their last five serves. Yeah, let's go. But the side let's out here is Derisi puts it away. So back over to Crandall and Derisi at 7 8. <laughs> Crandall continues to be frustrated. He puts good swings on those counter attacks, but it's the second and third ball that he's getting jammed up on. Crandall puts it right down the middle for the winner. Yeah, and the defense that Andrew is playing is just unbelievable these last couple of rounds. Crazy eights right now. And now back in front for Derisi and Crandall. Yeah, that's a ball that Witzkin has to re respect, right? That ball is dropping. It's dropping quickly. It's going to be below the net. You're no longer going to be able to keep your opponents back right there. They're not. A, he's not going to be able to keep Derisi and Crandall back. He has to go something with an angle out wide, get them moving, or you know, just drop that one over. Witzkin and Andrin want a timeout. We'll step aside briefly. Back to Naples in just a moment. Pinto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Paddle Tech, the official paddle of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, by Southern Tide, the premium coastal lifestyle brand, by Takeya, hydration is an all-day game, and by the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, save the date, April 13th to 20th, 2024. Crandall and Derisi two points away from a bronze. But Andrew and Witzkin have not gone quietly here in this second game. Crandall puts it away, and that puts them on the precipice of a bronze. Ten, eight, two. And match point and bronze medal point. And not so fast, say Andrin and Witzkin. Yeah, that ball just floated on Crandall. 
Not much Dorisi could do about that one. Just split in the middle. Back to just a 9-10 margin. Randall tries to speed it up, puts it into the net. We're tied to 10. Extra pickleball here in game two. And a timeout will be taken by Dorisi and Crandall. This is their final timeout. We'll catch our breath one more time. The conclusion of game two coming up. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. By Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, Florida's paradise coast. By Skechers Pickleball. Experience performance comfort on the court with the all-new Skechers Viper Court Pro. And by Margaritaville Hotels and Resorts. Check in and chill out at margaritavilleresorts.com. Well, the fans are still into it. As the bronze medal still to be given out. And we're in some extra pickleball. 10-10-1. Andrin and Witzkin have staved off one match point. Can they get another point here and, and put themselves a point away from winning the game? Well, it'll move to 10-10-2. I, 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 they were both waiting for an opportunity, and it was like, this is either going to end in, in great fashion or, or it's just going to fizzle out, and that's uh, exactly what happened. Everybody was worried about making a mistake right there. You could feel how it's hot. So 10-10-1. Crandall and Derisi get the serve back. Yeah. Oh, ooh. Ooh, I thought he was, really was going to throw it. <laughs> I'm glad he kept that in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> that could have taken out anybody within the... Uh, 180 degree timeout radius. Andrin and Crandall had one timeout remaining. They'll use it. And we will take one last break as well. 11 10 in Naples. The Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, are brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. 
by Zing Zang. The number one Bloody Mary brand is on fire with new Zing Zang Blazing Bloody Mary by Deco Turf, the official pickleball court surface of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships by Franklin, the official bag of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And remember, you can purchase the official U.S. Open Pickleball Championships apparel at kitchpickleball.com. Well, Teresi and Crandall with an 11-10 lead and match point number two, bronze medal point number two out of the timeout. They needed to do extra work. They needed extra pickleball, but they finally win it 12-10 in two games. So 12-10, 11-9 to win the bronze medal. Guys, it was, uh, man, I, I thought we were going three games because that was how tight that one was. Yeah, it certainly felt that way the entire time. So. All, right, all, right, all of the games that we streamed today, they all they all went three. Oh, we had 12-10, 12-10, 11-9, 12-10. Exactly. Well, listen, uh, I, I, I just want to say it's been a lot of fun, you guys. I, I, you know, I know we've got a, tr a crew in the truck that has had a long day, and uh, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to belabor the point, but I'm told we're holding for stats. We're going to make our graphics guy come up with one last graphic here before we before we sign off. But while we're waiting on that, I'll thank everybody who was a part of this today. Of course, Melissa McCurley and Chad Edwards did such a fantastic job. I want to thank Rusty Howes uh, for all of his great support and the work that he's done here all week. And uh, also want to thank all our fantastic sponsors and uh, Chris Yvonne and uh, Terry Graham and Jim Ludwig and the entire crew here in Naples and everybody here at the East Naples community park who just does such a fantastic job and makes this event such a pleasure to be a part of and we are just starting our first of four days before the for the three of us here together calling this event so a whole lot of fun again the, the only numbers that really matter in this one uh, are 12 10 or 11 9 12 10 uh, but let's look at the final numbers pop them up we're waiting for them Oh, the race, we're still stalling. So final thoughts from you guys. Yeah, final thoughts. I mean, it's Senior Men's Pro Doubles Day uh, here at East Naples Community Cart. Didn't disappoint on Zing Zing Championship Court at all. Great matches from the quarters to the semis to the gold and to the bronze. And uh, I just don't think we could have asked for a better day. Some of the best crowds that we have seen um, in, in U.S. Open history here on Senior uh, Men's Doubles Day. And it just continues to be a historic tournament. I also want to thank my team, the Tournament Operations team, uh, D. Davison, Nicole Hobson, April Price, Marilyn Holiday. Uh, they all seven days will run over 5,500 matches and uh, working with all these fine volunteers. So uh, the tournament couldn't happen without you ladies. Thank you for everything that you do. All right, let's look at the final numbers. There you go. 30 to 27 on four stairs. Andrin and Witzkin done in by that. So that does it. I've already thanked everybody. I'm not belaboring the point. For everybody here in Naples, I'm Dave Ben saying so long. We will see you tomorrow from East Naples Community Park. Enjoy some of these final sights and sounds from the day that was.